what's going on? You're now tuned in to PVD Horror. I'm Brandon, and I'm joined by my co-host Dave. And today we have two guests, our boy Adam, a.k.a. I Blame the Movies, and our homie Chris, a.k.a. Silent Horror Night 84. What's going on, guys? Thanks for joining us today. Of course, man. Thanks for having us, buddy. Thank you, man. Very much. Always. Uh, So, Adam, you've been on the show plenty of times, but this is Chris's (laughs) first time. So, Chris, tell us a little bit about you. Like, what kind of horror movies are you into, and how did you get into horror, man? Uh, I got into horror super young. I think I was like six or seven, and my parents' um, neighbor actually, um, they used to like dub the VHSs when you get the two VCRs and shit. Yep. I wanted to watch Ernest Goes to Camp super bad, so they like, dubbed it from the video store. Then um, right after it was like Friday 13th Part 7, I'm like, what is this? And I like, blew my mind. So ever since then, I was like addictive. I needed more and more and more. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Fuck. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, man. So, Adam, uh, what got you into White Claws? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> That's right it's, it, it's a That's genuine the question, it man. That's right. amazing. That way today. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, white claws are just, you know, I'm, I mean, obviously, when it comes to fall stuff, you know, I'm the basic white girl of yeah. everybody's uh knowledge and everything because i drink all the pumpkin spice in the world and i mean i figured i wouldn't want to break that chain and not drink white claws so i mean <laughs> why why break that cycle bro like it's you know it's low it's, calories it's the, you know i mean honestly yes Those because truly. i mean uh, i don't like truly man i just uh it's it's not my thing um yeah i mean no no alcohol is good for you but um you know i have some certain fitness goals i'd like to meet and you know if i'm gonna drink some alcohol here and there white claws are just the yeah. thing to go to for me personally but uh i hear you this watermelon is a fantastic there you go. <laughs> yeah <laughs> alcohol is like the only thing stopping me from having like the perfect beach bod just yeah. alcohol That's the I, only- <laughs> I totally hear you yeah <laughs> other than that i'd be shredded right now you know That's how nice. much alcohol are you drinking <laughs> quite a bit yeah, it takes a 12 pack to which, the, every night. Which what's your go-to? <laughs> oh, I'm a beer guy. So it, and then like and what I ki- every, what, ki- what kind of beer though? And, and I just like trying new stuff. New stuff. Craft beer and like a new thing every every time I try a beer, I like to change it up. I don't like to drink the same thing twice. Kind of a snob that way. I do like a hard you like the, the kind day, of, though. Which it was a it was a I wanted to try the Topo Chico. Is that how you say it? The strawberry Topo guava. Chico. Nice, dude. Um, okay, it was all right, but after a while, like it started to taste like I was drinking perfume. So I was like, "Hey, eh. man, look, we can't, Yikes. we can't throw any other beers. We only drink PVD horror beer here." Yeah, right? now that's my only beer is PVD horror beer. <laughs> any beer we collab beers. on. Shout out yeah, to PVD Bible. horror beer. What's good, dude? I've seen the 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 many times that like I get invites to these goddamn things like in fucking Rhode Island. I'm like, because they have <laughs> so Chris, they have these things all the fucking time, and and they're so cool, but they're like. Oh yeah, you know PVD Horror invited you to this thing in fucking Rhode Island. I'm like, Let's yeah, go. I'll be, I'll be Let's right there. Trip, man. I'm like in the fucking car. You can I, do I'm, it. I'm about to get in the car because, dude, the, dude, their their events are so cool, man. And, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry for, uh, I, sorry for. I feel like I'd everybody. be very judged for uh, if I got to Rhode Island and be like, excuse me, do you have white claws here? And they'll be like. Yeah. I don't know how to do a Rhode Island accent, so I'm not going to even try that. So they'd just be like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Like, all right, yeah. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Shout out Buttonwoods Brewery Origins uh, um, Bear Project. Um, we just held a, had an event there a couple weeks ago. We did the Mother's Day film event, the trauma yeah. film. That's sweet, dude. We, and the month before, we did uh, Chopping Mall. So I did oh, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Whether... Weather's getting warm, so we um the next event will hopefully be outside. This last one was outside. Yeah. We have like this giant parking lot there. We're able to project on a, a rather large truck, which is like works out perfectly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's fun. That's always a good time, dude. That's so sick. Yeah. Yeah, man. Chris, I see a little fire pits at night, which you um project in your dude. phone. Oh, yeah. your house. Always, man. Always. Yeah. So I know how you guys roll, so that's sweet. Yeah. Awesome. So Adam, Adam, in all seriousness, though, what have you been up to since the last time you were on here? Oh, man. Uh, well, taking in the true uh, masterpiece, that is Scream 6, obviously. And um, I'm just kidding. I still have my same opinion. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I all had right. a blast seeing it with Chris. So I went to saw Scream 6 with Chris in 
40 yeah. X, which yeah. fucking blast. Let me tell you that, because that is, it was a creepy movie just to see in 40 X. Um, but no, man, you know, uh, usual adult stuff. Um, trying to catch uh, some some new movies here and there. Um, Chris was so kind to send me two witches uh, yeah, uh, from right. Arrow. And, yep. you know, I, I mean, if we talk about movies later, obviously cool. we'll get into that, what we watched throughout the month and everything. Yeah. So I'll get more into that. And uh, just trying to catch up on some Shutter things. Uh, trying to catch up on new movies and stuff. And... Yeah, just being a usual adult, catching movies here and there, and working and paying bills, bro. And nice. wearing sunglasses. That's Apparently. my basic life right now. <laughs> hey, who said that? <laughs> All right. All right. So everybody, today's episode is a new, is a new series <laughs> we're just starting called PVD Horror Monthly Recap, where we focus on new releases, events, and everything from like this month. So we're gonna focus on everything from the month of May. And like the main topic of this episode tonight is the 2023 Fangoria Chainsaw Awards that streamed on Shutter this past Sunday. But first, let's go over the month of May. So um, first, I just want to get into like a few like our past episodes. So I want to send a shout out to Spooky Nick and Terrell. Released a cool episode a few weeks ago, focused on on yep. on prom themed horror films. So definitely check that out. Um, what what are some prom horror movies you guys love? Chris, sir, sure. take the floor, sir. I'm gonna have to go with Tragedy Girls. I love that movie. You like that? I love, I love that Vinegar um, Syndrome release they had. The artwork is so sick on that. All right. Great. I'm surprised it's not talked about more. It should be. Now, do you just like it for the artwork, or do you just like the film itself? Like, what's going on? Oh, uh, definitely both for sure. Just I love the release of it. It's so fucking awesome. I love it. Yeah, because that was a one one of the films that you know I had watched when it first came out, and I didn't think much of it, but I, I thought it had like decent kills. And then when we did the episode, I was like, okay, let me try it out again. And I was just like, eh, just, I, I still feel the same way about it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's not for everyone. It's all good. <laughs> well, I mean, it, Brandon, maybe it's kind of like your next. How many times did we have to watch your next before <laughs> yeah. we really like kind oh, of understood it? Was, it was so good. <laughs> I know. And like, yeah. I love so many, like so many movies that all those people involved have made. But for whatever reason, that one, I just wasn't connecting to. Yeah. I, mean, I think it was like my fifth try. I was like, all right, I think I actually kind of dig this now. Um, <laughs> all right. So it just took me a while. So who knows? Maybe we'll watch Tragedy Girls like three more times and we'll be into it. That's true. <laughs> Barely to never. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adam, I'm going to guess Prom Night. You you know that's probably my only one that I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm not actually... So I... Because that was on Hulu, correct, Chris? That was like a Hulu release? Tragedy um, Girls? Um, I don't think that's, so. That's oh shit. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. that's where I saw it. Um, I've seen Tragedy Girls. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I um I saw it once and I was like, yeah, that's enough. Um, of course, original prom night is going to be one of the most epic things ever. Carrie, um, which I got to fortunately see, I forget what what the anniversary was. I think it was like 40th or something. Uh the uh, Fathom events was hap- ha- happening and everything, um, so I got to actually see it in theaters, which was incredible. Uh, it's a and it's an incredibly uncomfortable film because John Travolta is a disgusting human in that fucking movie, and <laughs> it made I was just like, oh, this, yeah, I hated him throughout the that whole movie. Just like his character, I was like, this is such a disgusting like fucking character, and uh, but no, just to see that on the big screen was amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I might just not be as, um, knowledgeable as many. Oh, no, I'm good. Keep going. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, bro. Um, (laughs) um, but no, yeah, I mean, prom night original will always be probably my favorite themed of that. Honestly, almost top carry. Sorry. Mm. Um, and I hated the remake for prom night. I think it's one of the worst things to, come across uh cinema so yeah that's just me that's just me bro that's just me i agree i'm gonna drink my white cloth <laughs> Love those <things>. yeah <laughs> so um the other uh one of the other episodes we had uh last month was ben scrivens and the fright rags episode so that was cool because like obviously we've been able to 
um, enjoy, you know, fright rags clothing for from years. And I'm assuming you guys probably have some fright rags in your closet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then the other ones that we did were uh, Robbie Banfitch uh, talking about the Outwaters, mm-hmm. which was a uh, screen box release. And then we did one uh, that we released uh, called Godless with the director and the cast of that. Unfortunately, that film is getting pushed back to mid-June. It was supposed to be released. The next oh, really? so, yeah, they they reached out to us after and they were like, oh, my bad. We uh, <laughs> we it got pushed and we uh, probably got to mm-hmm. repost this later. But um, have you guys seen either of the, uh, well, obviously not Godless, but have you guys seen The Outwaters? No, I have not. I've heard of it. I never watched it though. Yeah. It's uh, definitely one that's getting like a lot of that like mixed like Skinnamarink type reviews oh, where like some okay. people are like really into it and some people are just like, what did I just watch? Why did I just watch that? <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. Which yes. I kind of I love that I, a little bit though. I kind of like that like extreme feelings about things. Agreed. As long as it's not every film, like some films are just like, like mindless and sit back and. Yes. Yeah. Very true. So mm-hmm. like you said, Dave was going to add on, like you said, what did we just watch? We also have a series. So we just dropped our third episode to that series. It's called, what did we just watch? Where we have a lot of our social media followers kind of recommend films to us that we haven't seen. And we usually just kind of pick two of some that seem like decent or something that we haven't seen. So yeah. um, this past episode, we focused on Ghost House and the platform. Um, have you guys seen Ghost House before? I, I don't know how I missed that movie, man. That's... I have Ghost not. I, I've seen Platform. Um, I remember that one. All right. Platform? Yeah, it was pretty rad. I enjoyed yeah, that Platform's one. pretty cool. All you right. guys both need to watch Ghost House. Like, Ghost. What's it on? Tubi. You, yeah, you should oh, okay. have already watched it yesterday. Um, because it is like just it's it's bonkers. It's yeah. absolutely nuts. Okay. And it's fun. I'm down. Oh, yes. Hey, I don't think you guys have recommended a film for us. So you guys got to think of something that you feel like is crazy and that you think we haven't watched. Hmm. I are we doing this now? You can, oh, but yeah. like yeah. also you can. Oh fuck! Okay, time. I apologize, man. No pressure, um, no pressure, Adam. You got this. I I have a I. I have a film that everybody should see. It's called, uh, and I just fucking forget the movie. Um, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> oh my god! I think I heard of this um, before. <laughs> sounds familiar. It really impacted your life. Oh my god! Right. <laughs> um, the Attack uh, of the Chris... Killer Wake Club. <laughs> yes. Someone's got to make. Oh that. my god. <laughs> um. Chris, go because I'm gonna. Ki- oh, it's killing Come on, me that I can't think of nothing. Well, I could recommend. Well, this is like uh, now you're gonna put me on the spot just because you can't think. Of <laughs> Chris, go, dude. It's your first time. Let me think right now. Oh uh, my god. Well, I'm sure you've both seen it, but what about Campbell Holocaust? You guys watch that one? Uh, yeah, it's a classic. I figured. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys can get back to us, Adam. If you think right. about it, if you think of it, just you know, throw idiots. it out there. But know. yeah. It, um. So. Well, we do oh. bring it up. Oh, go ahead, Adam. <laughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't think of the first part because you said ghost house and I was thinking of it had something to do with ghosts. So it's called Incidents in a Ghost Land. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's oh, by so the same say, person who made, it. um, isn't it by the Inside. same guy who made Inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was, damn it. That's, I thought I was going to blow your mind, but damn it. <laughs> Adam, we're going to, that's on my list because we've been doing, well, we did one and we're going to do more of those horror psych episodes. We're kind of like, um, just picking apart movies from like psychological and mental health one uh, lens. And like that movie is perfect for that. Um, so that one is definitely going to be something we'll do. Okay. Good shit. Yeah. Good, good, shit. good call though. That's, that's one that mm. got, it came out and it like quickly, like kind of got overlooked. It like got very much a little yep. people like didn't really pay attention to it. And then next thing you know, nobody was, nobody's yes. talking about it. So. Uh-huh. Um, so, um, one of the, the last things we just finished an interview last, uh, the other day, I can't remember when we did it actually, everything's a blur. Um, but it was like for this movie, Wrath of Becky and, uh, it's a sequel, which I hadn't seen the first one as Kevin James, Lou, Lulu Wilson. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I, I didn't even know that it was the first one, but this one, like, you don't even have to see the first one if you, if you haven't already, um, yeah. this is coming to theaters this Friday. It is 
pretty badass time. So I, yeah. I was okay. like, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's just one of those films, like, if you love, and Adam, it's not like, I know you have a hard time with like, I spin in your grave type revenge movies. Um, it's not that type of revenge. It's just a, mm -hmm. just a revenge film. So... <laughs> Well, have Wait, you guys seen the first I'm one? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Don't you like have like a hard time with like the rape I, revenge? I mean, like I well, I love well, I mean rape is very uncomfortable. It's it's yeah, yeah. it's but like I love that movie so much because of the revenge like yeah. oh no, I, I, I think that film is one of the yeah. most no, I didn't important. mean that you didn't like the film. I know uh, you like that film because we've had that conversation. Come on, man. So can't squash my can't squash my rep, dog. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adam loved <laughs> I'm not gonna say it actually. <laughs> Don't say it. Oh, I don't god! See now, I love revenge it. movies, so like, uh, we're, thank like you. This. yes, we'll, we'll, okay. Because I did see the first one; it was okay. enjoyable. Yeah, it was enjoyable. Um, because it was definitely something, I guess, a little different for Kevin. Yeah, uh, to do and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm actually I've been excited for the sequel because I've been hearing it being made and everything, and so yeah, I'm I'm excited to see that. Yeah, um, I think that you will like it because like because like Dave didn't see the first one and I seen the first one going into the second one. They kind of had that campy like uh, sequel for horror films it has more of a comedy tone to it. So it evens everything out because the first okay. one was a little bit more serious. This one kind of has like it's like the ride. So it's like the same thing like with, you had Kevin James in the first one in a different type of role. And this right. one has a uh, stifler from uh, American Pie. Oh, no. I saw man. that. That's really <laughs> cool. Yes. He does I'm a good in. job, too. He's like, yeah. oh, he's like pretty good. Shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you I guys actually watched the whole movie of it already? Or just a way yeah. More? Yeah. That's sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the, awesome. The, the, kills were, the kills were definitely fun. And just, yeah, just one of those movies where it's like super straightforward, kind of just mindless, but like it's a fun ride. Love it. That's sweet. Yep. That's sweet. Sweet. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure if all our listeners are listening to this episode now, go back and listen to our interview with the writer and director of Raph and Be uh, Raph of Becky. So that'll be streaming nice. this Friday. So yeah. definitely check it out. Right, man, um, but yeah, we have a lot of cool interviews set to release for the month of June. So stay tuned. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Brandon, yeah. I mean, I think we're safe to say some of the titles. I know we can't like do reviews because there some of these movies haven't come out yet. But like, yeah. um, I know Bloody Disgusting has been posting a lot about um, the angry black girl and her monster. Yep. So yes, oh my god, one, dude, that trailer looks amazing. It's yeah. a great movie, man. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. Guys, oh, dude. Oh, I'm so excited for that. You yeah. guys are gonna like that. We got to talk mm. to uh, Bomani J Story, yep. uh, who is the director of the film. So that one's That's coming amazing. Out. Yeah. And we also everybody knows that the Robert England uh, documentary uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Dreams and Nightmares is coming yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got to talk to those guys and those guys. I know we're going to talk about it later. They just got an award for um, the Pennywise documentary. So yes, oh, okay. awesome man. So, yeah, it's awesome. quite the interview. So we're we're looking forward to you guys checking those out. Sweet, yeah, exactly. that's awesome, dude. Oh yeah. Um, also, uh, some news is there is a new subspecies film coming out, uh, Subspecies 5 Blood Rise, which is going to be exclusively to Screenbox and Full Moon on June 2nd. So we got to ask you guys, are you guys fans of subspecies? I've literally never heard of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yikes. It's wrong full Moon to have on this episode. Full Moon, love Full Moon, absolutely. Yeah. So if, if you're a big fan of Full Moon, I think you guys would love this film uh focuses on uh, vampires this is actually a prequel so it's been in the making for a few years for a few years now but ted nicolau just finished it up and so that'll be releasing soon we were able to already check it out so yeah you know and so we originally talked to him back in like 2022 early 2022 i think yeah and he was talking about wanting to make this and um like shortly after kind of got i guess it got the green light and yeah. Did they film this in Romania again? Do you know, Brandon? No. Uh, um, Siberia, I think. Something. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, the, the, yeah. the last film, part four, was uh, released probably like 25 years ago. So, like, oh, wow. 1998. So, fans oh, have been shit. waiting for this movie for a long time. Shit. So, if you're a big fan of uh, Subspecies, definitely check it out. And if you're Adam, you can probably just start with this one because it's a it's a prequel, so you're you're good, man. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think they're all streaming on like Tubi and like Amazon yeah. Prime, so definitely okay. catch up, Adam. 
Adam, I, I think you'll I think you'll appreciate the first one. Yeah. So they're, they're not they're, they're, they're not for movies. Yeah, yeah. Or, okay. They're yeah. not for everyone, but the first one's like I I think is a super solid flick. Um, are they like are they like um are they like super like uh I'm trying to even think um like super cheesy super like uh or the first one's like times it's like very said, 80s, 80s right okay. it's very 80s the first one okay. I feel like it's not super cheesy um it tries to, it looks it's like got this gothic feeling to it because they film it like on location and like castles and stuff like that it's it, like oh, the shit. set okay. itself is is really badass and i feel like they kind of get a little cheesier as they go um yeah. but they're still okay. fun and they keep like the premise and it's this whole bloodline this family bloodline of vampires yeah. and stuff like that so kind of yeah, cool. like twilight that... is it like twilight mm. no eh, <laughs> no a little bit here and there no oh, i'm gonna read really. it then because i love no. twilight obviously but, um... <laughs> I think that that's, if you you would think that it would be cheesy because it's a full moon pictures like film, right. but I think this is probably like one of their like most serious like films in their series. Oh like, shit! Okay. Collections of everything. So, all right, check awesome. it out for sure. Yeah, guys. So I know like the main the main topic like of the episode that we were going to plan on having like all four of us talk about was the release of Evil Dead Rise. Which is now available um, available to stream and buy on demand, and it'll be coming to 4K and Blu-ray on June 27th. I just want to open this round table up and kind of just talk about Evil Dead for a little bit because I know we had some people that didn't like it and some people that loved it. So, Chris, I know Two. you're a fan of this film, so let <laughs> you start this off for us, man. Yeah, it was good, man. It felt like a very 80s, campy, old. I don't throw back to all the original Evil Deads, which is cool as hell. Yeah, but um, I I like thirteen better. I'm not gonna lie, cause yep, I think it was the best remake ever made. First off, yeah, bold, but, but good. Yeah. That was good. Right, Chris, I'm 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 not gonna disagree with you. I actually rewatched the remake like a week ago, and was reminded of how much I love that film. And it is super intense and gory. It so is. I, I definitely forget. agree with you. That remake is badass. Yeah. Um, I always forget how good it is too. Then you watch it, like, wow, I forgot how awesome this is. So yeah, the, the ending is just perfect. Like raining yeah. blood, so much gore. It's, I love it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But the new one was good though. It was worth watching, worth buying. I think. But yeah, I don't, Adam. Do you feel the same way? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for. I didn't know if they wanted to speak first. I don't know. You know, it's their <laughs> show. It's their show, bro. Yeah, you, you, because you can go. You can start. You can start at the negative. Now, I'm curious I, about your guys' feels on this on this uh, particular picture, as right. they said. Well, <laughs> going into it, just like Chris said, you know, I I feel as though that the two the um, 2013 movie was better, but this was a fun ride. This was to me it was kind of like how you know how Strangers came and it was like really serious. But the first yeah. film and the second one was a like campy like trip like 80s vibe. It was like the same type of tone for me, so okay. it was just like it was. It was, a, it was a fun ride. Uh, I had just rewatched it again the other night because I had um purchased it on uh, Apple TV because my son didn't see it. So I was telling Chris the other day I had gotten it so that he could see it and he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I think that like Evil Dead did the right thing because this is the way that you get like today's kids into this, this franchise, you know what I mean? Because I, I think that like my son, if you watch the original evil dead, he would just be like, Oh, whatever it is, what it is. But we could respect that and enjoy it because at that time we, we like the eighties films now, but you know what I mean? Like, so my son, he watched the, the new one and he enjoyed it. He said he liked it a lot, but yeah, I, nothing but positive vibes over here for it. So I don't know, Dave, you want to yeah, share? Yeah. I, same i mean i really enjoyed it the opening sequence was awesome when she rises out of the water i was like right there i was like all right this movie's seems like it's cinema cinema like the cinematography was yeah. nice like the setting was cool i was actually really into the fact that it was in like this high rise like in you know in the city i thought that was kind of a cool place to take it i feel like everything should go to the city at some point and give it a shot and see how it goes um, I do like, like Brandon said, I like that it kind of was a little bit more like humor based where the first, like the, uh, the other remake was like very serious, but they still felt connected uh, yeah. in some weird way. Yeah. And I actually, 
so the only thing I probably could have done without it, and like, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but just like the end monster type ish thing. Like, I feel like it kind of, I don't know if I was into that as much. Just everything that happened in the hotel, I mean, in their, in their, in their apartment was awesome. And yeah, I, I definitely, I liked it a lot. So Adam, go ahead. All right, here I go. All positive go. things, Adam. <clears throat> All, All positive, positive things. And here I come to just be the comet to crash everything down. Uh, no, um, I think the beginning of this film was quite spectacular. I think the opening was one of the most positive, to be honest. Um, because, like, I think it set up a lot of, like, gruesome things that I think were going to happen. Um, and then, to me, I, I mean, just being completely honest i i think it was i, I like i think it was kind of nice i mean I, I i don't know if are we allowed to talk spoilers or not or yeah it's, i think it, it's streaming now um, so it is. Oh, okay so like i mean obviously by the end of the film you see or like that was kind of like the end of the film like they did the flashback of whatever well it's in the movie so fuck it um so like i i did love the beginning i i thought that was gruesome i i thought you know the scalp ending was that's not a word um was gruesome and everything i was like oh shit man like we're in for this kind of fucking wild ride mm -hmm. and honestly i think that's kind of where it ended for me to be completely honest um the the mother i forget the actress's name yeah. i apologize but like she was incredible she was. in that role like she yeah. was oh she brought so much creepiness and just the sheer like terror that like mm -hmm. uh oh my goodness um you know, th there's things that, I mean, I, I know that, you know, for the most part, movies are supposed to be fictional and all this stuff. Like, I get it. I, I feel like the way that they found the book was a little <laughs> weird. I was like, yeah. no, that, that's kind of weird. You know, you don't feel like um, that could happen? Like if a uh, random hole no! popped in a, in a parking <laughs> lot, you wouldn't go down there? No, who the fuck would, man? <laughs> um, <They're> kids. <laughs> Kids did I it. mean, uh, would you do that as a kid? I kind of feel you? like Brandon and I would do it. I would do it. <laughs> Let's go down there. I, do I see Chris and Dave doing that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think Brandon would be like, hey, just message me how it how it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's fine. <laughs> hey, you like, all right, me hey, and Chris what, are doing you, it. We're you, going down. What'd you find? Oh, no. What'd you yeah. find? The black, Some the black dusty guys. shit? Oh, no, dude. I'm not yeah, going to The, down the black guy's not going to die first in this movie. Yeah. He's like, it's like, Dave, I've seen enough of these movies. I'm yeah. not doing this right. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But, but you know what? I wish that they would have focused more, a little bit more, like on the neighbors, like the people that lived in the apartments. Because yeah. I feel as though that they were just wiped out like so quick. And it was just like, all right, like that's yeah, all. I agree. Because it seemed like they all had like, a, like the kids had a friendship. You know what I mean? Like you could tell, like rewatching them the other yes. day, the daughter. The kid that came to the door with his little brother had a crush on the daughter, and so they kind of went nowhere. They came and knocked on the door, and she they asked her if she wanted to watch movies, and she said yes. no. And so she was getting ready to go to like a rally and stuff like that. So and it, yeah. it, it, it's just so many things that they kind of like could have focused on a little bit more. But I don't know. I, I think that might that, that might be on the cutting room floor. You know, that maybe. might be all deleted scenes. Yeah. It feels like a, it feels like there are storylines that. Yeah. Just, oh, there was. Yeah, I just felt for a, an Evil Dead film, I think it was quite tame, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, be, because especially the the last film that we've gotten was 2013, which Chris has said, David said, I think Brandon said, like it was. A, I mean, obviously, it's a fantastic movie. It's yeah. it's probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, remake ever to be made, and it's so like to go from that. Evil Dead Rise. I just think it was a little bit of a, a tamer Evil Dead film. Um, I felt like everywhere that, like when the marketing came out for this film and you saw a cheese grater everywhere in the marketing. So you're so excited for this cheese grater oh, yeah. like scene and then it happens. Yep. And it was, I think it was one of the most tamest things. It, yeah. it looked like a cat scratch. Yeah. <laughs> I, was I was like, that because so it was too. Yeah, dude. Like I, I, I was that. looking for like something gruesome, and it was just like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh shit. That's it. All right. Yeah. That was, that's uh, what I found. I was like, oh, that was okay. I mean, 
I would I would buy it. I would own it. I think it's I think it's well worthy of a a, a place on the shelf and everything. But you know, if, if I'm gonna you know kind of go down the rankings and everything, it's it's definitely lower on the totem poles for me. So let me let me ask you guys a question because I know Brian, we had kind of said this. Like, what are you guys' thoughts about Army of Darkness? Are you guys huge Army of Darkness fans? Yes, absolutely. Both of you, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I rank this higher than Army of Darkness. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, I David. I can see it, though. Like, okay. I see a lot of people liking it more, because I get it. What about the TV series, though? Yeah, I liked it. I liked the first two seasons. I don't know if I really got... It was a. There was only three seasons, right? Yeah, I I yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I have to finish like a probably like a few more episodes into the third season. But from what I've yeah, seen, it was all right. It wasn't bad. Yeah, I didn't finish mm-hmm. it, but it was good. Yeah, it just kind of halted, didn't it? They just like pulled the plug after season three. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. So like most things, man. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, because right. yeah, I, I think they won stars. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not like the greatest company unless you're 50 Cent, you know, because that's all his <laughs> shows are. So uh, I don't know if you if you need if you need any other shows on stars the last too long. Yeah, <laughs> that one cool like documentary from 06, I want to say going to pieces was on stars. You guys watch that one? No. Yeah. They all like the old 80s, 90s, early 2000s horror. Like, um, it's, I think it's like a good two hours worth. Definitely worth watching. That was sweet. All right. Oh. Definitely check it out. Nice. Is it is it like in the darkness or no? Uh it's not as in search of darkness is probably more or in search of dark. I'm sorry. Okay. They're like yeah. four or five hours worth. This is like a good hour and a half, two hours. There you go. There's a recommendation. There you go. That's there a sweet go. spot right there. There you go. <laughs> nice man. You know, I, I see like a three or four hour documentary and I'm instantly like, yeah, maybe another night. I don't know. It's tough. It's I, not, yeah. I guess I guess get intimidated by long like run times. I'm like, uh. Uh, yeah like titanic rough yeah. Uh, yeah well that documentary on the what was it uh never sleep again was four hours i believe yeah. like yeah i but i watched every second of it because i loved it <laughs> <laughs> i did i did like that one yeah. all right so i guess that wraps up evil dead we got three positives one yeah. two, i think it was mid he's changing he's changing it already I, no 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 i think it was always mid it's no. just nope this end of the good. episode we're gonna have four positives <laughs> there it is we're, we're turning oh, that boy. thumb at him <laughs> all right <laughs> all right <laughs> all right so malum is a reimagining of a 2014 horror film called the last shift and it was released back oh. in uh march in theaters and it's now available available on vod has anybody been able to check that out yet i know it's getting a lot of buzz no i, I heard of the not f- yet the one you're talking about I have not seen it yet either, Brandon. I don't know if you got to check it out, but like the trailers look pretty freaking cool. And I don't, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get to check it out, but it, I definitely want to. It's definitely on the list. Uh, I remember when uh, was it Fangoria had reposted it, and then I, we had put it up on the page yeah. because it had had a like little press run of the film. But I've been hearing some reviews. You know, some people say they like the 2014 uh, movie uh, Last Shift much better. But I heard this one wasn't bad at all, so it's like definitely worth checking out, though. Have you guys watched The Last Shift? I I haven't seen. Yeah. It. I seen it it a was... while ago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. It. it was good. I like it. I like yeah. it. I'll check yeah. it out. Yeah, it's yeah, because of... it's like the same, like, it, or it's like the same what director, same story, yeah. basically. Like, That's so right. he re- he remade his own yeah. film, right? That's an interesting, interesting. concept. Interesting. About, okay. Right? Yeah. Hey. Like maybe he couldn't tell as much in last shift. I like, I'm kind of confused of. Malum, I wonder if to be uh, if it's more of like a budgetary thing, like or that yeah. you make a film just to get the budget to be able to make the film you want to make. Sometimes you know, right. um, but I mean sometimes budget doesn't really matter. Yeah. No, no sometimes I mean. lower is honestly better. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. So the next thing, you know, we're big fans of Gremlins. Uh, today on HBO Max, they just released an animated Gremlins uh, series called Secrets of the Mogwai. So if you have kids or anything like that, or you want to introduce kids to horror, I think this would be like the best thing for you to do because starting off early, Gremlins was probably like one of my favorite films. You know, mm-hmm. you have Gizmo. So that I think they're just releasing this to kind of get ready for the third one so i hope they 
start that up soon because I know they were talking about kind of having uh, Gizmo uh, hang with like Billy's daughter. Like, because I know they had kind of like Ooh. put that back in the Super Bowl a few years ago with the commercial. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Is that Mountain Dew yeah. or what was yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I think they're gearing up for that. So that's the plan. So, oh. so cool. Yeah, Ooh, I had it on man. a little bit earlier. My uh, my stepdaughter was watching it, and so it seemed good. I I guess they dropped like the first two episodes. So nice. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, I, I was thinking about Gremlins the other day because I was like, try, I was trying to think about like what gateway horror like I was like watching as a kid, like before yeah. I actually watched a real horror film. And Gremlins was definitely like Gremlins. Gremlins and Teen Wolf kind yeah. of prepared me. I feel like for real, real deal horror stuff because it had like. You know, it's got the horror elements to it, but it's mm-hmm. obviously meant more for a younger audience. So that's cool that, mm-hmm. you know, kids will be able to kind of reconnect with things that brought us into horror too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not sure. I think there's a like an animated like Alien versus Predator, like anime uh-huh. series that's like locked up. Disney oh, yeah, that's I, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely kids horror is like definitely taken over. Just the other day, they dropped the trailer to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. That looks nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look decent. What you guys think about the trailer? I like, I like seeing Matthew, but it's PG thirteen, right? Yeah, I never played the game before, so I couldn't tell. See you. me neither. Honestly, yeah. so I don't know. So I don't know. I mean, it, to me, I was just like, is it, it? It looks like another one of those just like animatronics come to life thing. Is that what Five Nights at Freddy's is? Or? Yeah. Yeah, so like right. the movie that Nick Cage did basically was supposed to be like Five Nights at Freddy. Yes. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. what, what was it? Wonderland? Something oh, was Willy's Wonderland. Wonder- Willy's Wonderland. Yeah, I love that yeah. one. Yeah. Wacky's Wonderland? Is that... <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the kids in our local area is making a film called Wacky's Wonderland. And so... Oh, uh, he he's, he's a he has special needs, but you know I think I'm like one of the main characters in the movie. But I, he never talked to me about yes. it, he's like promoting yes, it. Dude. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. We never had conversations, so I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you do it. You don't ask people's permission. You just like a boss. You tell them they're doing I'm it. Like, damn, I'm in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> so shout out to Wacky's Wonderland. I don't know when it's coming out. Nice, man. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Uh, so- so there's some other big news, Brandon, right? About Beetlejuice? Yeah. Shout out to the guys for breaking the internet the other day with a photo of Winona Ryder as Lydia Dietz, like 36 years later for Beetlejuice 2. It was spot on. Have you guys seen that picture? Oh, is that yeah. the one with the Hell camera, right? yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. She looks identical. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Nuts. Uh, I can't yep. wait for that though. Yeah, I mean, with that... with Stranger Thing, with Stranger Things five on fucking, you know, whatever. I'm sure she's like, well, all right, let me just go do Beetlejuice two, I guess, because yeah. everything's on fucking hold right now. So yeah, yeah. How you guys feel about it? You guys feel like it's gonna be good, bad? Yep. I I feel like this is a resurgence of uh, Michael Keaton again, right? Yeah. So he's sure. reprising the Batman role in the new Flash movie, and then yep. he's sure. gonna be reprising Be uh, Beetlejuice. Like, good for him. That's this true. is like his second um like resurgence. I feel like a year a couple of years back he did a few like drama. He did that Birdman movie which I think Birdman, won an Oscar. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he mm-hmm. did another movie where I think feel like he was part of like a newsroom or something like that. I can't remember what movie that was. Yeah, I know what you're but, talking about. Yeah, so I just feel like he's kind of go- keeps going in waves but just like good for him man for like staying relevant and picking good movies that like mm-hmm. cuz that's a skill too like you know Al Pacino uh, like and Robert De Niro literally will do anything it feels like yeah. and like they kind of went from like being these kind of people to like oh they're just doing another like comedy mm-hmm. for you know family comedy movie that nobody's probably going to watch but like I feel sure. like he, he chooses like good films to do and tries yeah. to, you yeah. know yeah, sure. tries to be selective yeah sure. I'm hearing nothing but positive things about the Flash movie. So I hear I'm hearing that like that's one of the best like superhero movies of all time. Mm. That that trailer looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, I have no idea what the fuck's happening at all. I don't understand <laughs> any of this I interdimensional agree. stuff. But like, it sounds it looks cool. Uh, it's it, it's hard to like because yeah, every I I don't think I've heard anything negative about that movie. Even people that have like seen it, but of course, like people say like you know if you can try to ignore everything that's going on behind because Ezra Miller has been like a horrible fucking person in real life and he's 
so like it, it, it's hard because some people like will protest it uh, understandably because of Ezra because of how terrible of a person that he's been and everything but you know then you have other people that are just like it is one of the most incredible movies comic book movies ever to be made so it's it's a yeah it's hard right. to, it's good good for them though to be able to make a another one for the dc franchise right for because true. like you know they started off with these films and everybody was kind of like and it, just the vibe Ooh. of them was not great then they did Aquaman, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, all right, they can actually make a decent film yep. out of this. So I was, you know, this is cool. Yeah, sucks that because well, you know who made Aquaman or directed, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry, nah. I can't remember. Hey, Brandon, yeah. <laughs> excuse me. Eh. Hold on, everybody. Me and Brandon have to have a conversation. What, <laughs> what's going what's on? your deal with what's your deal with Juan, dude? Are you serious right now? No, I'm saying Aquaman. Really not a fan of the. Uh, oh, series. okay. Well, I was just trying to praise one. I mean, I'm not no, saying no, Aquaman. I, I is the I'm, I'm just saying. Well, man, well, you were like, a little salty. Wait, that was man. James Wan. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, I for- I totally forgot that. Wow. All right, I'm not saying it's his best work. All right, I was just trying to praise one, and then Brandon <laughs> had was to a be good like, movie. he's like, Wan is nothing. I'm just like, bro. Yeah, that didn't say that. Don't be putting that on my name. <laughs> Don't you put that evil on me? <laughs> Ricky Bobby. <laughs> uh, no, Aquaman was definitely not one of his better works. I can't actually stand that movie, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, because yeah, they've been resetting, and now yeah. James Gunn has the has the helms now. So hopefully, something good will come. Yeah, he just did his thing on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. So <laughs> so. You know, coming Perfect. from the world. So let, let's mix this up a little bit because I think we're talking about a little bit of a superhero. We are. Oh, jeez. James Gunn's background and it horror. Works. Started off in trauma. So from going to trauma and doing, you know, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, like hands down, you know, and all, well, all the Guardians, you know, just he's been killing it and uh, Suicide Squad. So. Hey, you know, hey, you can start off anywhere. So definitely shout out to all our trauma people. Yep. We appreciate everything, all the support. So yep. Yep. um so Project Wolf Hunting is a film that's now streaming exclusively on Screenbox. This one kind of snuck by me. I didn't even really like catch too much wind about this one until like just a few days ago but it's uh, promises to be one of the bloodiest and most violent movies of the year. Mm-hmm. You guys checked it out. Has anybody heard anything about it? Oh, no, so- I never heard no. of it. I want to, I want to see it now. I, so do I, I need to get screen box. Like what? Yeah, I, you do. Damn uh, it. You do, man. Yeah. All right. Am I the only one without screen box? Chris, do you have screen box? I do not. What is, what can you get that out? Is see, that Apple that's TV? what I'm saying. So, um, <clears throat> It's not on Apple TV. No. I don't, they don't have the no. app on there. I have it on the phone, but I can, you can watch it on your iPad. Okay. And I'm pretty sure okay. soon coming up, they're gonna have everything set because it's so it's powered and energized by uh, Bloody Disgusting, you know. So it's their okay. service. Yeah. So definitely, everybody that's listening, if you you should definitely check out Screenbox, like Dave said earlier, they have a lot of cool exclusive films coming up. So you can see Subspecies there first on June second. I'm not sure when it's going to release anywhere else, but they they definitely get a lot of cool exclusive films. Yeah. Okay. We we originally got it because of Terrifier too, and just like shortly after that, they just kept coming with like new yeah. and exclusive, and they're just you know I did I just kind of like the the vibe with what they're going for. They just want to do the same thing like with the Shutter exclusives. They're just trying to like bring some notoriety to right. These, um, oh, yeah. not lower budget and just kind of like movies that probably aren't going to get theatrical releases. So right. Okay. Yeah. Was it wasn't was Outwaters screen box? That was screen yeah. box, right? Yep. That's what I thought. Okay. Oh, yeah. they like bloody disgusting and uh screen box did like a phenomenal job of like marketing and pushing that movie out so that p- people could get some it would so people would watch it. Like I didn't stop hearing people talk about it for a period of time. So um they mm-hmm. definitely did a good job of getting the word out. Yeah. And they have a, a cool documentary that's streaming now. It's called uh, Living with Chucky. So it's just like the uh-huh. whole documentary of like all the Chucky's uh, films and into the TV show and then just the back life of the family dynamic of the whole cast and crew. So definitely check that out if you guys have not seen it yet. It's a cool documentary. It'll definitely be on my top priority to check that documentary out, obviously. Oh, full of shit. 
<laughs> Shut up, Chris. It's for the episode. Oh, yeah. Come I on. Go, you late, Chucky? <laughs> Bro, how long? Have I... I know. I know. I think I, you told me like the buddy better. The Child's Play remake. Oh God, no, dude! What? <laughs> no, no, every, no, man! I'm like the biggest Chucky hater in like the nah. community, man. Come on, it is what it is. Man. You like Megan? I mean, it was basically Chucky remake, anyway. So Nolly Darris. <laughs> That's a good one. Able to kill a doll <laughs> off. Do you like that film, Dolls from the '80s? Yeah, it's Dolly Darris. Oh, that's Dolly no. Darris. Mm. I don't remember that. <laughs> like Puppet Master. I I actually love Puppet Master. Hey, you got that hey come on, man. you're fine now. <laughs> oh, I got I got some respect for Puppet Master. <laughs> yeah, you're, right, you're okay now. Nah. So now, like we said before, um, we kind of wanted to open the floor for you guys to kind of like just talk about some of the films that you might have seen over the month of May that we have we probably missed or like some of the listeners might have missed that you enjoyed let us know christopher take the floor my man uh, i watched chill in the corn like two weeks ago it was yeah, uh, it, was yeah. It, it starts out all right then it just goes off the rails it's like watching cloverfield hmm. wait a minute why did you just yeah, burn cloverfield <laughs> oh i love cloverfield <laughs> but it's, just, it's just like so completely oh it just gets because it goes off the rails yeah oh yeah it's like <laughs> all right, all right. Like, cloverfield's amazing i love cloverfield yeah so, yeah um, where did you watch uh, Children of the Corn? Uh, I bought it on physical, but I think okay. two weeks ago, I want to say. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's worth watching once, but I probably wish I would never bought it. But it's all right. <laughs> does it does it look like does it look like a, like a real release, or does it look like one of those like sci fi releases, like all the sequels did? No, actually, it was like the effects were good. Just it's, the idea was just kind of off the rails, pretty hard. Okay, but worth watching. Watch it once at least. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to check it out just to, just to see. Oh yeah, get it's a fun one. You gotta just get like drink like twelve beers and watch it. It'd be all right. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's terrible, man. Oh my god. Wait, you watched it or Adam? Did you watch it? No, I didn't watch that, dude. I'm not. Watch that shit. He was thinking about twelve beers and he got so upset. He was like, <laughs> I was like, maybe twelve did you say white beers claws. or white claw. Yeah, I'm confused claws. at what you said. Get a little white girl wasted. Why not? <laughs> that's the name of the game baby yeah i've heard nothing but bad things about it you know because going into it just watching all the children of the corn sequels <laughs> just over the years that were always re- released and just like what the fuck can you guys stop yeah it's true. <laughs> no, but so when i saw this i seen the cover first and i was just like yeah i'm not rushing to this but i'll definitely probably check it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't buy a physical copy. I don't know what was wrong with you that day. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, There's something you guys I, have to understand. Like, um, if you look at Chris's page, um, no, yeah, you you would think he's an ambassador for Best Buy because literally that is where his fucking life is. He has his own section in Best Buy. They so basically fun. have it. <laughs> it's like he everything is Best Buy for him, and I, I, I you know, dude, I, I get it. That that was me. Yeah, I was just gonna so say. I'm I'm in I'm re, I'm in rehab right now. I had to, I'm, I had to <laughs> but that would be me. I would go to Best Buy and just buy anything that released that day, like even albums, you know, from albums to games to to movies. And I was just getting to a point where it's just like, damn, I don't have any room to put all the shit anymore. I just yes. I have to stop. And then so I would always say, you know what? I'm not gonna stream shit. And then streaming's taking over my life because it's just easier. I'm a dad. And it's just just being on that time of just watching what I can and not having to go to a store to pick something up. And rewatching movies has been a lot harder these days than it used to be because there's so much that we have to like watch and keep up with. And yeah. I mean, there's like just for not just for this podcast, but just to be like relevant in like this horror community. I feel like if you want to have a conversation with someone, you have to have seen oh at least God. a few of the most recent films. Yeah, otherwise you're lost, you know. Well, I felt like an amateur when you guys were talking specimen. I was like, "What the fuck is, what is that? <laughs> subspecies?" <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. That's oh, a totally gosh. different film. That oh, that doesn't. There we go. That's the horror yeah, that already get canceled oh. by the full moon uh, community. <laughs> they're, not gonna, they're not gonna like you. They're probably she not. Like I'll, species. I'll look up full moon. <laughs> I'll look up a full moon picture and I'll, i'm sure i'll find one that i've watched so don't cast me over subspecies just tell them you like demonic uh, no you, puppet you like puppet master. Master. oh that's right yeah see 
Same. Same. What about like uh, Evil Same. Bong? You watch Evil Love Bong? Me. No, yeah, what the bong, fuck? Yeah. What? Evil Bong is fun. fucking. It's a fun yeah. ride. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Ginger Dead Man versus uh, Evil Bong. Yeah. Yeah, it's like six of those movies. Oh my god, you buy this whole big box set with the box. Wait, is Jack Frost part of that? <laughs> no. Demonic See, toys. Like that would, but demonic no. toys. Check that out. I think you'll like that. <clears throat> The first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Adam they just, they Adam might. Refused. They might not like me ever. So it's fine. Oh, damn it. So. All right, Adam. So share with us the film that you wanted to talk about that that made you like change the way that you were living for the month of May. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so I will highlight two films. Oh, there um, we go. um, Christopher was so nice enough to send me the error release of Two Witches. Starring Rebecca, I forget her last name, so she's gonna kill me about this. Um, Kennedy, thank you. Uh, Two Witches, which was one of the most bizarre movies I've ever fucking seen, and it's so fantastic, dude. It's um, oh, oh, oh this Chris, you guys interviewed her, yes, yeah, yeah dude, we got to talk with her. Oh, yes, dude. oh, super, super nice down there. Oh my god, I, I, was like, able to, I was able to check out a little bit of that. That was yeah. good. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yes, dude. So, yes, two witches. If you guys haven't seen or anybody that's listening, <laughs> please check that movie out ASAP because, oh, yeah. um, she was able to at least tell us legally that something more is happening with that story. So, keep an eye out for that. Um, Oh, dude, I'm so excited because, yes, Two Witches was, was, like, one of the most bizarre fucking movies. Legit, even, like, um, you know, even for the budget that they had, there was some of the scariest imagery that, like, it's cringy in the best way in horror, like, history. Like, it's it's such a great film. Oh, gosh. Um, and then, so now to go to the negative side. Um, <laughs> negative. <laughs> You're negative? No. <laughs> That's me. Um, so I've heard nothing. I've heard like endless uh, critiques and reviews about this movie called Soft and Quiet, which actually just released on Netflix, I believe. Mm. Um, and they said it's the most messed up. It's the most disturbing film like ever. I watched it. And yes, there are some it makes you almost guilty feeling white because it's just about a bunch of racist mother. Wow. It's about a racist bunch of white girls that just hate fucking everybody. And it's, it's disgusting, but the film itself is just so boring that like, I just, I was like, Oh yeah, these women are gross. Yeah. What's new? Like, like it, it, it's like the, about these, like it's about like Karens that are basically yeah. hate, like hateful towards everybody in the world that aren't them and it's it's it is it's a disgusting you know obvious um factor and everything but like just the film itself i was just bored i was like i i don't understand the yeah the the hype like yeah it's a disgusting film because you know people like that are in this world even in 2023 and it's like the most disgusting thing ever but like as a film i was just like Oh, okay. I'm glad I watched it on Netflix because, like, as a film, it was just boring to me. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of those things where I think, like, you know, they can get away with like throwing out these really like bold statements to like draw yes. people in. Yes. Um, I think a movie like that, like, the, what you got to understand is like they, what they need to understand is you can just go on Twitter and see that. Like, you don't need to watch a movie. Well, yeah. Now that mm-hmm. that exists, like, exactly, they have to like do something with that. They have to make it like brutal and in order to like well, sure. yes. really shock us these days because we see it all the time it's like maybe oh, yeah. like five years ago when like stuff wasn't so out in the open they could have done that not even five years right ago, longer than yes. that but like yeah you got to like really do something to shock us now because we've seen so much in society exactly yeah like there, there's some really disturbing shit that they do with i i these these two asian women and it's disgusting like the mm. the, the 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 hatred that these women have for the world is truly disgusting but it's also almost not surprising because like there are people that literally exist like that even today. And it's the most like disgusting thing ever. Um, and, and it's, it, it's just disgusting and it's like hateful, but like just as a movie, I was just like, it, it just was kind of boring because yeah, like you said, you, you can go anywhere and you could still find that. 
yeah it's it's Sucks. truly a disgusting but not surprising film like yeah. there's still I, people that I, I think, exist in that shit and i think we're like starting to get a little like exhausted with these films that are like throwing like really like important societal issues in our face but like they don't have much to say other than the thing exists and yeah. it's like exhausting like all right i get it like but mm-hmm. like what else is there to say about it like mm-hmm. you know make something happen and or like do something yeah that's actually like gonna like i know that's been an issue with me like i'm i i enjoy like uh learning about stuff like that yeah. and like like just seeing it in my face and just like sh- highlighting how bad of an issue it is and like not really having anything else to say about it doesn't better my life in any way so i'm like i can take it or leave it did That's you guys not, get to probably, see this movie or i'll no? probably skip it to be honest with you just based on what you're saying because i don't need to feel more like shit about the color of my skin so it's like you know it's just one of those things Brandon, did you get to see this movie no no i nah, haven't seen it yet okay probably won't <laughs> yeah i, yeah, I, I mean it's it's free on i mean if i mean it's at least free so like you yeah. know if it, it it's just uh you know it, it's just not a surprising film because yeah there's disgusting people in this world and you know i almost felt guilty watching get out because i was like holy shit man like <laughs> i was like damn dude we are some fucked up people sometimes but like <laughs> but at least they did um, something with it right dude like, oh, like, dude, oh like, get that out yeah that's dude. that's, yeah, that's, like, that's, that's well done else, right? but like yes yeah um no, Soft and Quiet was just like, it's almost like if you just did a documentary on Karens or just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I hate everybody that's not white. I'm like, right. all right, yeah, you still exist in 2023, man. Like, it's not like a, it's it's sad, but it, like you said, uh, Dave, it's, it's like nothing almost new because sadly, they're still in 2023, those people. So, yeah. 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 Watch Brandon, yeah. I just said we didn't see it. Now, like in an hour, we're going to get it. Like, what did you just watch recommendation of soft and quiet by <laughs> Adam? Quiet, like, yes. Yeah, you asshole. <laughs> but, I hey. kind of want you guys to see that just to, just to <laughs> know your opinion. Jess. But that's why everyone should watch The Wrath of Becky <laughs> streaming uh, <laughs> out on uh, Friday. So, you know, I mean, it's just like the same thing. She just kills everyone yeah. that has with people. So, yeah, <laughs> check it out. Yep. Okay. Yep. Hey, um, Brandon, I just I got a quick one for us because uh, yeah. I know me and you checked out a film recently that we didn't already talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. So Saint Drogo, yeah. which is uh, by our buddies uh, from Monster Makeup LLC, and mm-hmm. they did the film Death Drop Gorgeous, which we've kind of talked about in the past, and we've had a few of them on our um, mm-hmm. on our podcast previously. But they're all from Providence, and they uh, they put this film Saint Drogo together, and it was like awesome just to watch like their progression as filmmakers and these people kind of see like they will come to our events and stuff and we've kind of uh been talking to them for years and just to kind of see them making like this legitimate film like death drop was a legitimate film too but this one just you can just feel the growth within the film of like their abilities and stuff it was really cool it's got some cool creature feature um makeup too which i think people will dig yeah it was like right after I watched, I had to message them and tell them, I was like, you guys took the shit to the next level because it's like you said, Dave, how much they have grown over the years from uh, from Death Drop Gorgeous. It's, it's it's just great when, you know, like like even like today when we like tonight, when we talk about like the um, Chainsaw Awards, just like the growth of everything in horror, you know, what I mean, and just knowing people in this community mm-hmm. that are doing great things, it's just it, it's, you know, I mean, it's positive and I just love everything about it and I just when everybody's awesome, winning you know so yeah yeah awesome. there's a lot of like trolls on social media so they'll i'll hear people like talk about that stuff how people are quick to get behind a, a yeah. keyboard but that feels like why on our end it's like so important to just keep like pushing like telling them like don't give up and like keep keep pushing forward because like you know they're doing we're like this like the four of us are a great example of like the kind of people that want to see this stuff those people that get behind the keyboard they go into the that shit already with like I can't wait to tear this to shreds. Oh, you it better blow me away or I'm going to tear it to shreds. That's basically the way they go into movies, you know? Yeah, that's uh, exhausting, man. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I, I get it too, you know what I mean? Because we like, just like us, we would sit there and say, yeah, I didn't like this movie and everything kind of like, you just talk yeah. about through your peers and talk with to each other about it. I never yeah. go on social media and just like blast something or just no. 
And it's to the point where, like, even some directors, like we were just talking about, it, we had the, the guest of like the rap of Becky, like for a movie they made before. Like, I think it was what was it? The uh, uh, the Netflix movie. Yeah, uh, Netflix. The Invitation. No, no, not the Invitation. Um, the last Open House. The Open, open house. house. Yeah, you know, getting, oh, yeah, okay. with the kid oh, from shit. with the kid from Scream Five. Remember yeah. That? Oh yeah, shit. The, the writers and directors got like death threats and stuff saying that movie was terrible. Really? No, and and because because of the that kid, because yeah. um he had just come off that show 13 yeah, Reasons, to die, Reasons yeah, to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what yeah, some, whatever it is. People loved him, I guess, and they were upset what happened with his character in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, crazy. granted, I was I was actually pretty upset with Scream Five because you know obviously he was one of the best characters. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. maybe one of the only good characters in Scream Five. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Um, right. <laughs> um, damn, for real. See, that's crazy. I, as you see, like, I mean, obviously, I'm probably the comet to the earth of you know I didn't like D- Evil Dead Rise, but I'm not going on anybody's fucking page, and I'm like. This is a terrible fucking movie. I'm like, no, dude, I didn't Did like it. Let's your, move on. Uh, Twitter post. I don't see your Twitter post anymore. How you hated those people that were in the movie. You had to take it down. What? Forget it. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Did I just it, did that go over my head? Oh, I'm an idiot. You just said Damn you're not it. that person that does that, and I said, oh, did you just delete that Twitter rant that you went on? I did. I did. Yes. How you I hated said, oh god, I hated everybody down. in this. I hated everybody. In but you did. Movie. You did acknowledge that the mom. You really like her performance was awesome, and I feel like we'll she, probably be talking. She was my favorite character in the whole film, movie. Yeah, we're uh, we're definitely gonna be talking about her next year for the Chainsaw Awards, without yeah. a doubt. Like she's oh, gonna absolutely. be getting a Chainsaw Award for that performance. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Please. Hey, Brandon. Before we move on away from films, um, I just want to give my team a shout out. I'm wearing my Celtic shirt, hoping they stay alive tonight. So if you guys listen to this. Um, I'm either either super depressed or I'm like living my best life because Celtics are gonna either disappoint me or uh, they're gonna make my day today. So we'll see. Well, well I'm in, I'm okay because my team got swept last <laughs> night, so I'm okay. Lakers got swept, but and oh, LeBron man. might be retiring, so we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's a story for him to get out of LA. But yeah, I think it's a storyline, so we'll see. You guys, yeah. NBA fans, Chris, you're me and Chris, me and Chris are like. What the fuck are they talking about? Chris, are you in Buffalo? They like <laughs> in Buffalo, yeah. <laughs> they like hockey. <laughs> yeah. hockey, and, hockey and their bills. I know that, right? Oh, they do. Oh, diehard fan. They do. I'm not huge in the football, but people are like, we'll kill you over it. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I went to Buffalo in like the winter uh, oh, one yeah. year, and it was just <laughs> built, there was bills, flags everywhere. Yeah, and it was just like, I was like, this is, it's cool. It's a cool like environment to see people like passionate about something, but. Quick side note. So I lived in Arizona for like a year and a half. My parents moved down there. I worked at the Glendale Arena. So I would see like all the NHL players for the uh, Coyotes. And so I didn't know who who those guys were. I would walk past them every day and I'm just like, oh, whatever. But then one day, Gret- uh, Wayne Gretzky walked by me. I was like, all right, I know you guy. So <laughs> oh, he, was Wayne coach. he was the coach of them, yeah, right? He was the coach at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice so, man. I met Wayne Gretzky. That's all. <laughs> That's all you need in life, almost man. Yeah. So, Dave, I'm That's assuming it. you are a Patriots fan. Going to yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm a Patriots fan. Yep. You get an old. You, you, you look. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Fan. I actually, if I had a backup team, it would be the Bills because I really like Josh oh. Allen. He's Josh Allen is is a beast. Oh, yeah. So he's sick. Yeah. He's just saying that. I don't hate. I don't hate every other team. Just just the Yankees. Right. If I were to hate another team, that's probably the only one. They're like I hate a team, yeah. It's kind of like I hate the the Bruins or I hate uh, the Penguins. I don't know why. It must be the colors. Fuck team. you, man. Fuck <laughs> must be the colors. Man, fuck the Bruins. First off, yeah, because they <laughs> they aren't original and can't fucking decide on a color. So they're they're original take Pittsburgh, so it's fine. <laughs> shout out. Man. Well, since we're talking about Buffalo, I want to send a quick shout out to all the Buffalo horror community heads down there. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I see how you guys are just taking over. What do you guys oh. got Thursday terrors? Do you go down to those events? I do, and they have uh terrors at the drive in. They do like a oh, double okay, cool. feature. He does, man. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, Peter, he is amazing. The whole yeah. community is sick. Yeah, you guys, uh, because we talked to a lot of people that's in that little uh Buffalo horror crew, you know what I mean? So yeah, shout awesome. out to everyone, you know, Elm Street Warrior. 
Hey. He lives like two streets away from. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, two streets street. away from you. Yeah, he, he walks over here and just fucking <laughs> drink more, watch watch movies at night. It's been, a, it's been a while, but he's a good time. He's a blast. That's awesome. Now, do you guys is. agree on movies all the time, or how's that going? Uh, it's a hit or miss. Not, we agree on how it ends. I guess that's a positive. <laughs> I thought him and Adam were gonna get into a fight when I seen them on oh, Instagram oh, Live sitting on the same couch. <laughs> Dude, that was funny as hell. They were so. It was Dude, funny. me and Elvis so do White not Jeep. agree on shit. <laughs> I mean, I'll give, I, I got to say, like, he does have, like, some pretty, su- like, bold opinions about film. So it's oh, like, yeah. you know, okay, he, Dave, sometimes I'm like, what you, what you, I don't have bold opinions. What's going on? <laughs> you have, you, your opinions are fine, Adam. Your opinions uh, are fine. What the fine. fuck? I'm <laughs> saying, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Hey, Adam, uh, Adam no, this dude, is about no, him, dude, here, right? Dave, don't, take, don't take away his spotlight. You got to speak positive because we're talking behind his back right now. He's not here. You just talk negative about me, though. (laughs) You're here. You're here. You're here, though. You're You're like, he's amazing. He's bold. He's ambitious. You're all right, Adam. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's not not at all, man. At least that's your face. It's okay. (laughs) That's true. He has some shitty scream four tags, but it's fine. I'll. Let that go. It's fun. Hey, Adam, we don't we don't roast you when you're not here on on that podcast with other people. Son of a bitch. We, we cancel it. people if they say things about you, Adam. <laughs> cancel them. That's fair. That's fair. That's 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 friendship. That's true. That's friendship. Right. That's, that's, true. that's true. That's hilarious. All right. So now the moment everyone has been waiting for. We're gonna get into the 2023. Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. First off, I just want to say uh, it was a great night for horror fans. And we want to say thank you to Shudder and Fangoria. Thank you for giving us an award show that was essentially for, made for us, made yeah. entirely for us. It was awesome being able to watch actors, directors that have been featured on our podcast to take home Chainsaw Awards. So, you know, there was, was just so wild. many people. Yeah, it was crazy because like I was saying earlier, we had so many guests that actually won or yeah, even yeah. nominated in this thing so it was just like it was really cool it was a different experience watching this award show and so like right after um it ended i was i just messaged everyone and was just like oh congratulations and so they had gotten back to us and said oh they appreciate it and um that's awesome john a local guy he won for the uh penny wise documentary i, I texted him i was like dude i i was like i gotta see that fucking chainsaw award so gotta sit there and meet up with him to go take a look at that cool nice man I, I wanted to give a shout out to the guy that uh, commented on our Fangoria special episode yeah. and said for uh, two horror uh, hosts doing a, a special on a Fangoria award show, you guys probably should have watched more horror movies because yeah. <laughs> every one I was like, no, I didn't see that yet. I didn't see that yet. So ah, I'll, I'll take I'll take it. Uh, like it was my bad. I should have watched more. <laughs> I've watched most of them now. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard to keep up. Yeah, that it was is. funny though. That's the thing. It's like because like we work, I work overnights, you work, you know. What I mean, we yeah. have busy hours and then we're getting thrown like movies that aren't even out yet. And we have to watch that and then kind of prep. So and then do these interviews. Sometimes we miss some movies, you know. So yeah. And I missed a lot last year. So I'm pretty sure I've seen some movies that you didn't have you haven't seen, buddy. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I just pre I did like I kind of chuckled to myself. I was like, wow, that was pretty spot on though. I I uh, definitely yeah. like after that episode was done, was like, damn, I kind of felt like I watched more movies than I did. So a little embarrassing, and he called me on it. That's all right. No, it's it's hard to keep up, like I said. It is. Yeah, but... yeah. I appreciate him actually checking out the episode. So thanks to that guy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there was a lot of awards that were just given out, but I want to highlight like the the first one that was like, I guess it was something new. It was like the editor eyeball award. Yeah. So that's where like our like friends of the show, Emily yeah. Bennett and Justin Brooks took home an award for the film alone with you, you know? So if anybody missed that episode, you can kind of go back on our catalog. I think that was season two, right, Dave? Yeah, that was feels like it was forever ago, to be honest with yeah. you. Cause we were, that was like fresh, like towards the end of the pandemic, yep. like, um, because that was when like that wave of pandemic movies all came out, um, them hellbender and a host had, I think just came out. Yeah. Uh, they, they were, they're cool. The two of them and that mil- that film was cool. Yep. And like, I I know we still follow them on social media and they, you know, they're always up to something. They're always filming something. So it's, you know, cool to see them kind of get some recognition and know that they're like, also like very much still have a lot more to present to us so yeah 
And uh, Adam, your girl, uh, Lauren from Terrifier 2, she took one. <laughs> yeah, girl. What do, you, what do you want to say? You got the shirt rocking the shirt right now. Yes, sir. One How of the best feel? final girls since Sydney Prescott. You Would go. you like to make a speech on her behalf? Uh, on her behalf? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, um, I'm, pretty dis- I'm pretty disappointed because she's filming a film called The Well, I believe it's called. Oh, okay. Um, cause I was, I was actually, I bought tickets to, um, Cincinnati horror, uh, horror hound. Yep. And she had to pull out because she was filming the well, yeah. which, Hey, I get it. She's working. She got to make that money, but I was really mad <laughs> because <laughs> I really wanted to meet her. Um, but no, uh, no, dude, I was so happy that she won that because uh, I saw Terrifier 2, I think, three times in theaters because wow. it was just that fucking incredible. Because, yeah. I mean, once you watch Halloween ends, you're like, oh, I need something to, you know, cleanse that crap out of my body. Sorry, Chris. Fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Hi. dude, I was so Hi. happy for her and everybody that was involved in Terrifier 2 because Terrifier 2 absolutely almost like wiped everything in that award show, dude. Like Terrifier yeah. 2 got the recognition that it did and I'm so happy for everybody involved. I just wanted to um, make a statement. I never want Adam to make a speech for me because he will first shit on me and then shit on the people around me. <laughs> hey! Dave pissed me off. You're fine. So you're fine. <laughs> Damn it. He, Dave, Dave knows me by now, man. So it's... it's I it's hate fair. that she did this. She made me so mad. Look! Oh, I was just God. so excited to meet her because she's my favorite final girl since Sydney Prescott. That's, hey, that's okay. That's highly from him, you know. Sydney Prescott is his favorite. Sydney is the greatest, and sh- <laughs> and then this new girl comes. I'm like, oh, are you like the greatest thing? Of course she is. Come on, you know, man. you know what's kind of cool though about like movies nowadays and like these like newer actors and stuff is like that idea that you could actually get them to be interactive with you. Like, you know, yeah. back in the day, like to think about a a movie star and like obviously you're never going to talk to them. You're never they're never going to like. You're never going to interact with them. But like I've seen her like interact with people on social media. Yep. And like yes. super, super down to earth. Like how cool is that? Like you could be a younger person or a person our age and we're just creepy and wanting to like talk to her <laughs> and she might actually like respond. You could actually interact with someone that you really, you know, admire or whatever else. Yes. So, yep. That's kind of cool. And also, oh, yeah. quick shout out to uh, Mason Thames from the Black Phone. He took one of those awards home as well. I saw that, was, that. Yeah, yeah, it was a great film. But you know, hey, I'm pretty sure we're going to talk a lot about Black Phone. So let's while well, we're talking about Terrified too, let's get into it because they know they won the, another award for the best kill. What did you guys think <laughs> about that kill? We we I call that it. Brandon. Yeah, we call, we call that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of that people are actually getting sick and fainting. That was like the, like the hook for the movie. That's why people went and saw it. They re- released it the second weekend because of yeah. like, the hype, I want to say, right? I'm pretty sure that was... I want to say that was actually fake, but... I wouldn't know. So, so you know, know what? It, it probably happened, but it might not have had anything to do with what they were seeing in order for them to be able to utilize that as marketing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I always say this story, but like when I first saw Human Centipede, I was at a rock and shock film um, convention and they had us packed in like this tiny ass room and it was super hot and it was standing room only. Some dude fainted in the corner in like in a closet and all you hear was hangers like rattling everywhere. <laughs> it literally had nothing, to, it had nothing to do with you. the movie. It was just super freaking hot in that room. That's funny. Like, as you hot. know, everybody left there and said like, oh, that movie was so gruesome. This dude fainted and hangers fell on him. Like that definitely happened. So, yeah, that probably is the same thing. Was that the first or the second one? That was said. the first. The second one is so gnarly. It's like the second one. Now, the yeah. second one is disgusting. Oh, it's like yeah. a snuff film. It's so I hate film. that film. <laughs> it I love it. It's so badass. <laughs> Chris. Adam, you, Adam, your favorite one's the third one, right? <laughs> like the prison. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> mm. it's, it's, I have a poster of it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. But, 
It's next to uh, Cindy Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I said, uh, I knew we'd be talking about the Black Phone a little sooner, but they had taken the award for the best wide release movie. And that was like with a category filled with like Barbarian, Nope, Pearl, and X. What did, what did you guys think about Black Phone overall? I liked that. I definitely yeah. liked it. A new, new original idea, not a remake, not a requel. No. Yeah. I did like Barbarian a lot, too. I'm surprised it didn't get a physical release, which is surprising. It didn't? No, it's it, okay. it came out in theaters and was on HBO, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen a lot of bootleg ones going around, like it's a red yeah, yeah. cover. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I, thought, I thought that was an official one, so hey, so I guess it's a bootleg. But, yeah, uh, yeah that, that's weird. Yeah, it's on HBO Max streaming, so um, right, right. what do you think, Adam? Um, no, I, I mean, honestly, I, I thought Black Phone was amazing. I think that time period is, was perfect for the, the film that it was. Um, uh, again, I'm going to be the comet that crashes earth with the dinosaurs here, but, um, I thought Pearl was one of the most beautifully shot movies, but other than that, I just, I thought it was a dull movie. Yeah, I, I I think it's beautiful. It's it's yep. it's so it's so visually captivating that like everything else about it, I just I wasn't a fan of personally. Um, uh, I mean, Nope was it, it's it's a great movie. I know he did. I I know he did director or I or he won. Yeah, uh, for director of that and everything. But uh, I think Black Phone deserved yeah. uh, that award. To be honest, I agree. Mm-hmm. so like that was the main thing about this award show is just like trying to split everything up because it's like it seems like you have these movies boxed in and going up against each other and like all the all the categories you know what i mean so it's like you gotta kind of pick off and sit there and say okay well i want this film to win this one you know what i mean and so mm-hmm. there's some some awards that were given i was kind of like why this movie why you know what i mean but we'll we'll touch on that one a little later but um yeah. coming up next Dave, did you want to add anything about Black Phone? Yeah, I probably am the only one that was like, yeah. I, I mean, I liked it, but I, I didn't like thrill me. Um, I didn't like the supernatural aspect to it. I kind of like would have liked it better if it was if that was left out of it, and it was more just like a kidnapping type of film. Um, I think I had said I don't get, when we did the interview. I think I uh, I said X was pro- was my pick for that, um, yeah. but I hadn't seen Barbarian at the time, and I actually really loved Barbarian. And I liked Pearl, but I wouldn't have been my winner for the category. Yeah. So, Agreed. Yeah. Sure. Black Phone's a good film, though. I can't deny that. So, yeah. Nothing deserves it. And like we said again earlier, Terrifier 2 was cleaning up. They took home the best limited release film of this category. So mm-hmm. they beat out films such as uh, Orphan First Kill, uh, Something in the Dirt, and Mad God. You know, so yeah. I... Looking at that category, like that category, I knew it's like Terra Fry was just gonna like clean up on that. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's there's no competition in that at all. But often first kill, I thought that was actually decent. Did you guys check that out? It was pretty good. I mean, yeah, the I, yeah. better right now. It's definitely worth watching. Do you yeah. own it? Mm-hmm. Do you own it, Chris? I do. You he owns like, every you own everything in this cat. Yeah, yeah. He, literally. <laughs> I don't own the barbarian import or the um just to go on record i don't own any bootleg films <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> i do but not that one yeah. <laughs> uh, so um going on to like the next category we have the best first feature uh the film the watcher had one did you guys see that film or like what's going on you saw it adam sure did can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Verizon commercial over here. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it was Sprint, wasn't it? Wasn't it like Sprint? I don't know. Yeah. Same thing. I don't know. There was that guy walking around everywhere. Yeah, the watcher was good, man. I actually enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. That movie, like I uh, had posted something about it a long time ago, like the trailer before it came out. And then I totally forgot about it, and until the I saw it, got the award, I was like, "Oh yeah, that now I remember what movie that is." Um, so I, I gotta check that out. I feel like 
Yeah, see, I didn't watch enough of these films, so clearly. Yeah. That guy I was watch, right. so. Yeah, I didn't watch it either, but we had seen Blood Relatives, so we had the writer and director on the show talking yeah. Blood Relatives. Deadstream was another film that oh. I kind of like enjoyed a little bit. I think that was my pick for this, possibly. If Yeah. And what was it? We're all going to the World's Fair. I ended up catching that after the episode that we we uh, released about when the guy got on us not seeing all the movies. So <laughs> I checked that out. And I'm surprised that the sadness didn't take this award. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because this was in there. Did you guys see the sadness? I did, yeah. That that is a tragedy, honestly, because that is one of the most like gruesome, awesome fucking movies, dude. It absolutely is. Yes. It definitely oh. took me back to like what was it, 2010 horror? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. I was just like, fuck, I, that was my choice for this this film, I mean, for this category, but yeah, I, I don't know. I guess there was a lot of hate over there. Adam, did you shake your head at Deadstream? Wait, was that? Oh, wait. Is that the right? I'm trying to think it's the right, if it's the right movie to shake my head at. Hold on. It's the, it the one where the guy... he, he's live streaming the in the abandoned house. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I had Sorry, so much fun I, with that. I movie. found it. I found him to be one of the most annoying people I've ever seen on a movie. Exactly. Screen. Sorry, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> no, no, that's exactly. I feel like that was what, like, it was supposed to be. Like, it was supposed to be super annoying, and you were supposed to like enjoy seeing like all the shit that he goes through. It's like I don't know. I had a I had a good time with it. Um, mm-hmm. I do love found footage though, so that, I mean that kind of helps. Oh, but... so do I, man. But that was uh. It was too I, much. I watched, I, I watched Grave Encounters for the first time in like I don't know even when that movie came out, but I watched Long that for the first ago. time like I think it's a, ago. 2009. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, all right, so let's get into the next category. We have uh, best streaming premiere. Prey had taken that home. But um, I, I just feel as though that this category should have been split up a little differently. I, I feel as though Prey should have been taken out of this category because it definitely overshadowed some of the films that was in here. So the first one being Fresh and Hellbender and uh, Hellraiser and A Wounded Fawn. <clears throat> I, you know what I mean? I feel as though, like, you know, with a film like Prey that has, like, a budget that Disney, well, like, a, bit, a backing of Disney, sure. definitely, like, did it on like i i wanted hellbender to win you know because that was just a a definitely like a different type of film that that released where you had we met like the uh the the family that made the the film the adams family they were on the show before that's awesome so so it was cool to have them nominated in this but i thought that they should have won you know i mean because just the background but i'm sure you know a lot of people don't know the background if they they've never seen the film just that was like another pandemic film. They were on the road a lot, a ton, like just filming yeah. random spots on like that they would drive by. It was just like so like DIY and just like they're just like a really cool. They remind me of like gypsies, this family. They're yeah. just they're just so cool. Everything about them is like I wish I was in their family. Um, <laughs> but they have another one coming out. Like I can't I know it's coming out soon if it's That's uh, cool. so, you know, hopefully that one gets some good recognition. Yeah. So Hellbender, that was on Shutter, right? That's where. Yeah. Done. Yes, yeah. so I remember Joe Bob showing that, and it blew my mind. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's a, that's a weird. Um, I personally like. I loved Prey. I think there was yeah. like one of the great, but like to still to be in that category, I think it's yeah. weird to be yeah. honest. Because yes, yeah. like those are. I I mean I wasn't the biggest fan of Fresh to be honest. Um, yeah. But yeah. No, those are those are very you know. Yeah, yeah, Hellbender probably should have won that. To be honest, it's e- even being as a fanatic of Prey, but like it's it's still two. It, it seems like two different monsters. Yeah, to be honest. definitely. So, yeah. like that's and that's, that's a shame. Yeah, you know? it's like these other films didn't have that backing of Disney. You know what I mean? So yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, like just comparing Prey to Fresh is like. A really hard comparison. Yeah. They're like two totally different like entities. Like, yeah, we're gonna put prey in here. Like, you know what I mean, just yeah, yeah. Think, <laughs> you know. So, um, the next one is the uh, best international movie. 
uh, Speak No Evil had won the Chainsaw Award for that. Have any of you guys seen that film? Yes. Oh, you I never seen that one. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll still get. Did hate. you see it, Dave? No. <laughs> Only one. What in the f? Look at this. Right. <laughs> but is it good? It's it's uncomfortable, but like in uh, it, it. But that's its purpose. It's yeah. it's a very and especially like towards the end, it just gets. It, it's a very uh, cliche of an ending, and it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's it's fantastic because it's. It, it's not gory. It's not like super graphic or anything, but it's just like a uncomfortable, like almost relatable film that like it's, I mean, there's granted, there are some things in there where like, it's like, okay, that would never happen, but you get that with all horror, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but no, yeah, it's, I, 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 I actually forget the other films that were actually involved in that category, but I know the hatching. No evil was, them, right? yeah. yeah. So the hatching. Was it for, the, yeah. The innocence. You guys watch the hatching? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We had the, the writer and director on the show. <laughs> Yeah. Just, it was just the writer. Cause I think Shit. the director was a female, but okay, yeah. yeah. So he's the writer. Yeah. Um, but that was cool. Cause like, um, that was just such a like a interesting and uh like unique story. It felt like a fairy tale, but pretty much like a like yeah. a grim fairy tale. Yeah, and Piggy. There was I'm like there was like things about Piggy. Yeah, because that per- premiered at some like London uh, uh, film festival or something. My buddy over in over in the UK told me about that, but uh, yeah, um, yes, dude. Somebody showed me that on hulu the hatch or the hatching and that was probably one of the most craziest fucking movies i've ever seen in my whole <laughs> yeah. entire life i was yeah. like but and then i saw it at walmart and i fucking bought it because i was like dude i have to have this movie because it's yeah. fantastic because it's so fucking weird dude yes yes yeah, so shout out to either Rotzi. that's his yeah. name right? yes yeah. Rotzi. Um, definitely, if you haven't heard of him, definitely check out his back catalog because he has a lot of cool short films also. So if you if you like hatching, dude, there's another one that just goes to a whole nother level. What was that one that had like all the dickheads and stuff like Night that? Night of the Living Dicks. Yes, check that out. Love the and, and also uh, the <laughs> sure. Hel- Helsinki <laughs> mansplaining incident, I think it's called, yeah. is another one that is fucking like, it's funny and like gruesome, so... He's yeah. he's he's you got to watch out for this guy. Like I'm telling you, like I well, his. Where do you where do you find those kinds? Of- I'm trying to remember if those were available them to us or if he, he sent them. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But you can look them up though. I think you can find them. I can't remember like what exactly we streamed them off of, but worth worth the look. Yeah, definitely check it out. So, uh, you know, going into the next category, we have uh, the best series where uh, Stranger Things cleaned yeah. up. You know, what I mean, that was an obvious one. That was a, a great season, but you had a lot of shows that were on the right on its heels. So I heard nothing but good thing about Yellow Jackets. I've finished probably like four or five episodes in the first season when it first released, and I just did never had gone back. But I know the second season just released. What do you guys think about Yellow Jackets or anything else? Oh, what, 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 what else was what else was in that category? I apologize. Uh, what we do in the shadows, Chucky. Okay. okay. And uh, well, we can have obviously the that. Cabinet of Curiosities. So I think that's on Netflix, right? Oh shit! Yeah, it's by uh, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. yeah. So for Stranger Things, I, I don't know. You know, I thought Stranger Things that season was great. Can't wait, like you said earlier. Can't wait for the next season. But who the fuck knows when it's gonna release? Nobody fucking adults by that, dude. Like, <laughs> gonna happen eventually. I mean, oh well, yeah. Teeth, I mean, so they all grow up at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a Stranger Things stand, so I will always root for them. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I I haven't actually seen Yellow Jackets, but I've heard incredible incredible yeah. things about it. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I gotta finish it. So. Like I said, I'm in like okay. six episodes into the first season. Got to go mm-hmm. back. But um, 
now it's time to kind of showcase another local winner, you know, for the best documentary feature was uh, Pennywise, the story of it. Dave, you were able to go to the premiere of this. Yeah. So yeah. You kind of talk about oh, it. Yeah, awesome, they did. Man. They did the premiere in um, uh, downtown Providence at the Columbus Theater. And uh, John Campo Piano, who um, is a local guy, he's up in Mass, but he's also, I think he lived in Rhode Island for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, was a big part of making this film. He also did um, a lot of the interviews, I think, and the research for uh, the Pet Cemetery documentary previously, Unearthed and Underground or something like that. Um, so, I mean, he definitely knows how to, like, get a good storyline and get good... Um, you know, just good content for a documentary. I I love this document. Have you guys seen the Pennywise one? I have not. Mm -mm. I, I, I I've heard it. nothing but great. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's on Screenbox. So once you get your Screenbox, then you guys screen can box. watch it. It's a must. I'm right. getting that tonight. I yeah, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they they have interviews with like literally everybody. Uh, that they that is still possibly you know able to get an interview from the original uh, it so it, it is just so cool and just kind of hearing all the stuff that went on behind the scenes and everything is just it was very cool so I I was really glad to hear that this one had won because I really enjoyed it and also all these people were involved in the new Robert England one which will be coming out in a couple of weeks on Brandon is that also on screen box it's on screen box. Oh boy. Yeah. Gotta get the screen box. Fucking get it now. <laughs> Gotta go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely check it out. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah, I get it. Man. I think they have some uh, plans going on. I think that if you kind of subscribe on Roku, if like if you have Roku, you get like three months for like 99 cents or something like that. So, oh, shit. not right. sure where it end when it ends, but don't hold me to it. I had seen the ad the other day. So, okay. wow. So, not only do they have the best streaming horror content but they're also offering great deals great deals yeah, it's kind of like we're promoted by streambox <laughs> yeah, that sounded like a fucking ad holy shit fuck that shit <laughs> what are you trying to get some fucking send that free ad here dude come on hey streambox takes care of us you know what i mean so but this is what we if you, if we have our so good. main listeners from the show we used to i used to push to be so hard and we had like our listeners were like give Tubi, give these guys a contract or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> you Sponsor know, Sponsor these guys, Tubi. But yeah, now we're... Oh, yeah. Shout out Shutter and Screenbox. You know? Shutter, Screenbox, and Fangoria. And Fangoria. Oh, yeah. Also, while we're, legit, we're on that, man. while we're talking about ads, if you're a Fangoria fan, <laughs> use the promo code PVD Horror. You can get 20% yeah. off your purchase. Thank, so you that, thank you for giving me... Uh, I um, ripped my subscription. I'm like, I got the code, Mike. Hell yeah. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, awesome. You, awesome. awesome. Appreciate it. Very cool. Saving everybody money in the horror community. That's and cool. I, I thought it was cool because it was like you you save money on subscriptions. And it was just like, wow. Or you can do it on merch. Just yeah. like, and then guess what? The code's always good. You can use it over and over and over again. So use the code PVDHAR as many times as you want to for 20% off your purchase. So yeah. Brandon, what was that code again? I for may you? have yeah, to awesome do that because... What is um, it? Yeah. What is it again? I think Adam should say the promo code. No, because obviously I'm the only one that's not doing these <laughs> codes because I'm <laughs> a loser. So we will after you say it. <laughs> PBD horror. That's it. That was a great ad, right? There. Oh, okay. That's that's the okay. So I will sure I shoot that over that. and get a subscription tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Wow, <laughs> that was a Billy awesome. Blake's get that and thing. Screenbox because it's obviously one of the greatest things in the horror. <laughs> and watch Shutter. All right. Wow. And watch Shutter because it has things on it that we like. Right. <laughs> and PVD horror. There you go. Oh <laughs> yeah. You, go. Was... you know what? I threw my back out with that last one. I don't. Yeah, know. that looked uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I I see. I don't. I don't think the horror community likes me too much because we're not uh, liable for that, Adam. So don't try suing us. Chucky and uh, oh, okay. Chucky. Sorry, that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you like puppet masters? That's okay. Yeah, puppet yeah. masters is safe. Oh right. yeah. As soon as I say my Chucky things, I'm I'm done. So yeah. it's all right. I'm fine. All right, I do love my Shutter though. I do love Shutter. Okay. There you go. 
Yeah, if you didn't have yeah, Shutter, there it is. There it is. If you didn't have Shutter, you couldn't watch this award show. So make sure you have Shutter. I think you can go back and watch it. Yep. Again yep. and again and again and again and again. But right. let's get back into the awards. Yeah, the a few lead. more, a few more left here. Yeah. So best lead performance. We're gonna go with Mia Goff for Pearl. Adam, you talked on it earlier. How the film looked great. You know, she. Uh, it was like the main thing for me. I, I enjoyed X better, but I'm I can't wait to see Maxine. That looks great. Who who else was in that category? I forget. If, if you don't, if I'm on, was there a? All right, let's break it down. Let's see. So we have uh, the girl from Orphan First Kills. We have the whole crew from Nope, and the Wounded Fawn. The Watcher and Taylor Russell from Bones and All. See, there's a bunch of movies like I have missed on on this category, but Bones I remember. All. I didn't get to watch Bones yeah. and All yet. I've been wanting that to. That one looks good though. So that's yeah. Taylor Russell and uh, Josh Rubin from A, a Wounded Fawn and Kiki yeah. Palmer from Nope. I thought that Kiki did like a great job in Nope. So it would have been out of Mia Goff and uh, Kiki. Kiki Palmer from me, you know. So. Yeah. At the time, I hadn't oh. seen Pearl yet, but I actually really agree with this um, outcome because I think she did a pretty phenomenal job. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's great in it, man. Um, yeah. I, I'm, you know, there's, it, it, it's just, I felt like there could have, like, you know, when you get to the end sequence of Pearl and like it's just obviously like her face. Yeah. Um, and the credits shit, like I would have seen a story between Pearl and X, of her and Howard I believe it was the guy's name but um I just think there was a little bit more to tell in Pearl and that's a shame because Maxine's cast list is ridiculous and I'm very excited to see that yeah and so the next category we have best supporting performance uh Madeline McGraw from the Black Phone so the younger sister she's the one that won that award uh it was definitely like a, a tough category yeah. of nominees because you had like yeah. Jamie Clayton from Hellraiser, Ethan Hawk, uh Justin. How, did, how did Ethan Hawk not get it as well? I, was, I thought the same thing actually. Yeah, I think <laughs> he was you know, awesome. Yeah. And even your girl, Jenna Ortega, was in that category also and did not win. Steven Yun from Nope. Who so. also was like his character was good. Like I know he's not a likable character in the yeah. film, but he plays it really well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And that that was the one thing you didn't like about that that movie, Dave, was like this supernatural stuff, and she walked away. I, and I kind of don't like her character, so I was watching. I was like, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, Ethan Hawke makes that. Uh, in my opinion, uh, obviously, this is yeah, a, that movie. But like, I think he made the movie. Um, yeah. he's, he's so creepy. He's so effective. And yeah, I mean, Brandon, you dressed up like him. It was you like that character so much. So yeah, it was a good movie. As for Halloween, I dressed yeah. up as him. I just don't do that. <laughs> you had to specify. Right now, I'm like, today, ride around in my car with balloons. <laughs> 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 be so sweet. <laughs> hey guys, you want those balloons? Of course, get in the car. Perfect. Hey, come on. <laughs> Not creepy at all. You're fine. You know, sometimes at night I, I lay in my in my uh kitchen with my shirt off, sit in the chair with a belt in my hand, you know what I mean? So see, do you do the half mask or do you do like the which which part of the mask do you do though? For Halloween I had I had the mask on. It was pretty hot. So I was doing the full mask. And then like when we were singing, this is how we do it. Cause it was a karaoke party that we did. I had to take the bottom off. You know yeah. what I mean? It was getting a little hot. That mask is hot. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so let's get into the next category. So we're going to go to like best director. Of course, Jordan Peele had one for the film. Nope. But like we said, like the categories just were just so packed up. We had Ty West for X, um, David Cronenberg for uh, Crimes of the Future, and uh, even the Barbarians director, you know what I mean? But Jordan Peele kind of walked away because I think that uh, Nope was just one of those films that just kind of 
change the landscape of things because it was his what that's his third film all right yeah. so yeah. it was just like yeah. just the style of everything that he kind of makes you think about stuff so yeah. would you what do you guys think you guys agree with this uh this choice oh yeah i definitely do i definitely yeah. I, th- I thought it was cool too because he actually did a video he said he usually doesn't do like videos or anything like that when he ac- accepts awards so mm-hmm. i thought it was cool that so, uh, he kind of took that time to kind of even just send it in because he's like a big fangoria fan and i think he used the promo code pvd horror of 401 <laughs> pvd horror that. saved 20 percent. yeah we got the notification when he did that so yeah yeah he's all yeah. set that's like, sweet. You know, just made a purchase. What's your promo code? I'm like, <laughs> you're fucking nuts. That's awesome. Thank you, George Peel. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Peel. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I I I love watching interviews with Jordan Peel because I feel like he loves movies probably more than yeah. so like his like I watch nope, I wasn't like the biggest fan but like i the more i watched it, i appreciate it a little more i like his i like get out a little bit more than yeah you know maybe some of it but like the way he i think i appreciate his movies more that when i hear him talk about things in his interviews because like he especially for like horror films like he has a like a, a a very great passion for like films in general like he, the way he talks about films and horror is just amazing so I, I i'm happy that he won that he he's like um a like a horror ver- version of like quentin tarantino where they make films about films like about mm-hmm. the process of making films and about mm-hmm. Hollywood and stuff like that so like i just feel like if you're going to do that you know that you're you know that's a that's a film buff right there like he knows yep. everything yep. Mm-hmm. yeah all right so uh getting into some of the other categories here we got Best cinematography, which also went to note. Um, and I think that Brandon, if I remember our conversation around that time, I think we were kind of in agreement with that. What did you guys think of that? Brandon, what were some of the other ones in this category? Uh so we have a wonder oh. fawn, yeah, men, yeah, pearl, and X and nope. Prey wasn't in this category? No. Oh, okay. All right. Which I'm kind of shocked. I think I actually it's... thought it was for some reason. I thought I had picked that one because that's that a beautiful film. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. see, because I think that prey should have been moved into that one. Yeah. I think they probably you think I I because Dave, I was watching the show and I I thought like a few of the movies kind of moved around. Moved around. Yeah, because yeah. I I literally thought we had a conversation about like me saying like how visually pretty prey was. Yeah, I thought it would fit in this category. So I don't know. Maybe sure. that was a different conversation, but it feels like that would have fit. You know, I'm a big Fangoria supporter. I don't want to say they cooked the books on that, but uh, oh. <laughs> yikes! Just yeah. lost your code right there, pal. <laughs> <laughs> that, I didn't say that. That was like an AI voice bot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Don't try to fuck up my deal, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> that was Drake AI saying that actually. Oh, shit. Um, and then uh, for best screenplay, we got the Black Phone, which. Yep. I think that one kind of makes sense too. And that's the thing like with these categories, even if like, it's interesting when you even like, you know, you know the film maybe isn't your favorite film, you can nope. still kind of like see how it fits as like a winner in some of these categories. And I think the screenplay for Black Phone is pretty freaking solid. Like, I, yeah. I don't know um, what you guys think about that. Uh, the the cinematography, I see that's tough. Cause you said Nope one over Pearl. Not that Nope wasn't like a very pretty film, yeah, but Pearl is just like visually one of like the uh, that's that's really tough because yeah. I think Pearl was one of the most visually. I can, I can see that too. Yeah. Oh, that, that's agree. that's tough. I thought Pearl was going to win actually, just because it's uh, that crazy. that kind of should have won a little bit more over Nope. But yeah. yeah, that's the thing though. But that's when we stop and we kind of look at these awards. Like these choices were like in our hands. You know, what I mean, it wasn't like Fangoria mm-hmm. or, or right. Shutter like did anything. This is what horror fans want it you know so it's true. Yeah. It's very true. It's true. hey yeah. everyone doesn't think like us <laughs> uh unique so the, so our next category i thought this was funny because we definitely agreed on this one but yeah um, it kind of felt like we were like throwing a bone so best score and that went to john carpenter cody carpenter Daniel Davies on the Halloween end score. 
Yeah, and right. we're like, you know, I think I think it deserves it. Like it's an iconic score, the Halloween theme and all that stuff. But also, like, we got to give them something. Poor guys. Yeah. Because uh, what was it? You have Nope, Men, Pearl, and uh, Bones and All. We're all in that category. So I like I, that's why I said throw them a bone because the, the the film wasn't the greatest. So I, I I would I wanted that to win something, but I don't know. Yeah, that, I I think that that was the only category that film was in though too. No, they were, I think they were in one more if I remember correctly. I could be totally wrong. No, I think Halloween oh. Ends was in just that category. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I thought it was for greatest it. film of the year and ever, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Adam, we agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Adam, you're right over there. Yeah, is, on, it, wait is, a minute. It, is it film of the year? Was it film of the year? I, I mean, I would have Hold on, wait a yeah. minute, because I, I, I got to read the room. Chris, do you like Halloween Ends? I do, actually. I'm like one, okay. of, like one out of a thousand actually like it. Okay. <laughs> he, he's part of the... Um, yeah, he, he likes them. Now, what did you like about it? I liked that it was like a curveball. Like, you yeah. had no idea it was going to be like that, even from the trailer, because I actually didn't watch the trailer at all, because Kills kind of gave away the good parts. So I'm like, I can't do mm-hmm. it again. Yeah, so, but yeah. Okay. Did you like kills? I love kills. Kills are great. Okay. All right. And now I and see like, I'm making those faces. <laughs> I mean, Adam's over there just like with his head down. Like, I know. Like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> Who's this guy? Uh, yeah. All right. It's all right. It's not for everyone. It's, no, it's Chris, I'm, Chris, I'm oh, not yeah. that. I'm not that far off on you. I I kind of liked ends. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like. I didn't like kills that much. But well, I didn't when I originally saw it. Yeah. After rewatching it, I didn't like kills. But I kind of liked the angle that uh, ends took. So, yeah. Yeah, now you're talking about Halloween movie. So I thought it was rad. It was different. Yeah. They could have just tweaked it a little bit more and did a little bit more to it. And it could have been done a little bit better. But I do you can do a reimagining of Halloween <laughs> ends. Yeah. I like my script that I had set for it, my little rundown for it. Yeah. We'll get to that another time, though. I think I said it on one <laughs> of the past episodes, but. I heard that John Carpenter is looking it over right now and he's going to get back to us pretty soon. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe uh, Jordan Peele because he uh, used your code. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hey, you know, either one we'd be happy with, I guess. You know, <laughs> we can go either way. So, all right. Best uh, best makeup effects went to, no surprise, uh, Damien Leone. And is it Leone or Leone? Yeah, Leone. Leone, Leone yeah. sorry. Yeah, we used um, to call him Leon. <laughs> yeah, always. Um, with Terrifier too, and I feel like that's super appropriate. I think we all that was coming. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. No, no arguments there. Nope, no, not at all. Best costume design was Prey, and I, I think I had picked that because I really loved like the what, indigenous. What was the other ones? So costume designs, we had Nope. So yeah. I passed on that one because it's just like regular shit. You know what I mean? uh prey and uh pearl pearl crimes of the future and the monsters i chose the monsters oh, because they took that easy then yeah i understand that i get that <laughs> prey but it's like i think monsters should costume wonder. design so it's about costume design so here's the thing where I, where I had an issue with that because prey also went something else that's kind of close near like the same the same thing and i thought it would be cool if they would have gave that to someone else like pearl could have won that or like monsters because i thought it was more original and shit like you know what i mean but i don't i don't i don't know pray with pray taking that i, I didn't agree on that one I you didn't think they did a great job with the loincloths and all that stuff it is what it is but it was just like come on the monsters you're going back and kind of like revamping something from the from the past you know putting some color to it ruining the I didn't say it was a good movie. I didn't say it was a good movie. I said it was a good costume. Sorry, Chris. It's all right. That was film cool. I definitely should have won that or Pearl for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The costumes. Oh, I could have seen it. more. Yeah, yeah, it's got like the t- the you know the timepiece. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Either one of those two for me. Okay. But that's why then, like Dave, once you read the next one, you're gonna sit there and kind of agree. Yep. Because the next one we got best creature effects, and then we got Prey again. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was a lot. See, what was like, the other ones? So the other um nominees for that was you had Prey, you had The Hatching, and you had VHS ninety nine, and uh, Nope. 
and then they kind of like threw Jurassic Park in here. I'm not sure why. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, random. Yeah, in, like, I don't know. VHS 99 had some cool creatures in there. Um, there did. was that whole like Mars scene with those like little demon goblin things, which was awesome. That's true. But here's the thing. This is where I feel like hatching could have done a little bit more awesome. too because going like doing the interview piece on that film, I kind of like did my research. And then so the same crew that did like the original Jurassic Park movies and then like I guess some of the like Star Wars stuff, they created that uh the creature. Yeah. And so it's like, you know what I mean? I think sometimes you, you kind of miss a little some things uh, on that, but it is yeah, that's a shame because I it, I probably would have picked the hatching, to be honest. Yeah. That's a shame. I'm not sure I know how many people have probably seen the hatching, but you know, if you miss the hatching, definitely check it out. Yep. It's worth checking yes, out. So. Please do. Uh, this one I think I was disappointed with. So best nonfiction series or miniseries and the 101 scariest horror movies of all time took this one. But Brandon, can you can you read the options for this? So we had uh, Cursed Films 2, yeah. Yeah. The Boulay Brothers, Joe Bob's Christmas Special, and uh, Queer for Fear. I was very mad at this one. I actually yelled because Joe Bob didn't win. Okay. That, yeah, yeah. So- Joe Bob was up there for me, but I actually loved that Cursed Films yep. um, season. And I don't know if you guys watch this, but like they did a cool episode about the Wizard of Oz, which um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it was all stuff I had kind of knew, but like they go deep dive into it, which I found to be interesting. I think they did this in this season. I think they might have done Poltergeist in this season as well. But mm-hmm. I know they had a couple ones that I was like, I, le- I learned a bunch of stuff and I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, so I don't know. I'm with you, Chris. I was kind of like disappointed with this one. Yeah, yeah. but I, I could agree though for a little bit because it was like the 101 scariest moments. They had so many people put into this project. You know what I mean? So it was like you kind of get everybody's kind of take on like from uh, Eli Roth to uh, um, Jeffrey Reddick. You know what I mean? So I thought that was kind of cool kind of mm-hmm. doing that. And I agree like with the whole thing with Joe Bob, but it wasn't like it was Joe Bob's whole, like his main special. Like, you know what I mean? This was just like a Christmas special. Yeah. 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 One so, of the previous year from like the, to the last drive in. Yeah. Year, right? Yeah. If, if if this was like Joe Bob's last drive in whole series, then like, you know what I mean? Like then oh, yeah. you cancel your that. shutter subscription. You know what I mean? But <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone has made more appearances in a TV show than Eli Roth at this point. Nah. He's in like every horror Absolutely, like yeah. special and TV show. It's crazy. Well, I think he just filled um finished wrapping up uh, in mass. He uh is actually he actually finished that Thanksgiving film that everybody oh, wanted. They wrapped oh, up. Man. Yeah. So yes. I'm pumped for that. It's been like so long. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's coming. That's cool. Can't wait. We would post it every Thanksgiving. Like, why did why don't they do something yeah. with it? They finally never. did. So right, let's never. It's all right. Uh, this was a category that I know I was disappointed because I didn't know anything about this category, but best horror short and close your eyes won this. Have you guys, did you guys watch any of the shorts this year? Um, I didn't know any of them, actually. Yeah, so what was it? We had Blink, Close Your Eyes, Guts, Meet Friend, and Oh Glory. I'm not going to lie, the little glimpses of the of the shorts that they showed looked kind of cool, so I'm like, yeah, kind of see some of those, so maybe... Yeah. Maybe check them out now, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll check them out. But that was a thing, and that was another thing that guy burnt us on. But you know what I mean? like, <laughs> it is what it uh, is. That guy scarred us. We're never gonna forget that. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it up. Why? Every episode, I'm gonna talk about that guy. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to be my best for that guy. Okay, I'm gonna step my game up for him. <laughs> First out of every episode, this is for you. I promise, I'll never disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. So our last final category here is the best Amityville. And this wasn't out when we had done our episode. We said we didn't even get to weigh in on this. Uh, yeah. So best Amityville film. <laughs> and the winner was, and this is awesome. It is Amityville Christmas Vacation with, uh, by Steve Rosinski. Yeah. Who ironically, we had on, he's one of our first, like, within the first three guests we ever had on this podcast. Absolutely. Steve yeah. Rosinski, we had on for... Uh, Karis Hell. Karis Hell. Karis <laughs> Hell. Um, so he is, like, just... He makes crazy uh, B-movie features, <laughs> and they're 
just they are just what they are. So Amityville mm. Christmas Vacation won this category Did amongst you... a bunch of other crazy Amityville films. Did you see his uh, <laughs> acceptance speech? Yes. <laughs> they had to like shut him down. I'm like, yeah, that was funny. That guy really is though. So he loves like... Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he loves wrestling, right, Brandon? Doesn't he love wrestling? Yeah, he, you guys that talk dude about loves wrestling? everything. That dude yeah. loved everything. That was a good episode. That guy was he's fun to have on. Just like how he, his energy that he brought to to the award show. That's how he is. That's cool. Nonstop. I think he was doing. Uh, he was like one of the smartest guys that kind of like had his movies streaming on like only fans like and the, yeah. the pandemic like you know what i mean what? <laughs> like no doing shit. it that way made his own little streaming service on only fans <laughs> oh, right. i mean Krasinski, you motherfucker. He's, got, he's got a category like a catalog of films though like it's if you just google his name or like you put it into like Tubi or like prime he like a shitload of films come come down and uh caris hell as crazy and like it as it is it is actually a lot of fun so that's one if you guys like that b movie uh stuff then i think carousel is one to check out did you watch the second one yet i don't think i did i'm trying to remember if we did or not i know it was coming out like that was a while ago yeah he had a few other projects too so yeah i messaged um him after he won you know and he was really grateful for it and so awesome yeah, it's cool. Like I said, it was just really cool to kind of watch this award show. Like I said, we had some we we interacted with a lot of winners and people who were nominated, and so it changed the outlook on this for us. So yeah, so it's just it's just showing how the shape of horror is changing, and it's a lot of positive shit going on. So that kind of goes back to that idea. It. Like it's crazy that like we can even interact with these people that are making yeah. that that we love. So I mean, the horror. Uh, community and the horror landscape right now is just a lot more fun, I feel like, than it used to be. Yeah. So now, are there some like because that was a wrap, that was the last of the categories, but are there any like films that you feel like got snubbed that you thought should have had taken something home? What do you guys think? I definitely feel like Prey took a lot more than it should have, for yeah. sure. Like we talked yeah. about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm sure with the budgetary reasons, yeah, that I, I feel like it might have been a little unfair to even have that yeah. in there. I mean, I, I, I still absolutely love that movie. Um, but but still, yeah, to see it with, I, I think it was a little weird to be in Fangoria. I, I think it was a little weird to be in those categories, to be honest. Yeah. Just because, like, I, I, I feel like there's so much light that should be shined on maybe a lot of projects that aren't as budgetary uh and as other projects like prey are and everything because yeah like re reading off a lot of that stuff like you know obviously we've seen hatching and you yep. know it's a crazy as fuck movie and it it should it should get a lot more recognition than it probably should or than it did and everything so yeah, yeah it feels like it feels like we were definitely kind of rooting for those films that like yes. we kind of felt people it should should definitely check out that are a little yes. less known. Yeah. I was I was really That's disappointed it. that um Jurassic Park didn't win more <laughs> awards. I just I feel like you know <laughs> they might they might feel bad, you know? And they might but, stop making movies about people experimenting with making dinosaurs and then realizing it's a true. terrible idea for the, the movie was trash. Yeah, this was one, yes, I wasn't. That's like they were all good till that point. None of this died. But when we did this review of the <laughs> the categories of the nominees last time, I had brought it up, and I think that's the third movie, right, of this series for Jurassic Park. Yeah. It's like every Jurassic Park like franchise that they have. Like the first few few movies, like the first one was good, the second one was good, and then when it got to the third one, that was trash. Yeah, it's like it has a, Jurassic Park has a thing for like every third movie they have is just absolute garbage. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Jordan Peele, fix it. Fix this, Jordan Peele. <laughs> Jordan Peele, Jurassic Park. Yes, please. I'd, like, I'd watch that. That'd be nice. I would, I would watch that, too. I would just well. have like this I'd big watch message. anything he did. So. Yeah. But he would never be able to look at uh, dinosaurs the same if Jordan had his hands on that. <laughs> yeah, probably true. <laughs> <laughs> like, goddamn dinosaurs. I used to love dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs don't even want to be dinosaurs anymore. Like, damn, I'm gonna fuck shit up. 
Oh, <laughs> oh man. All right. Dave, close this motherfucker out. All right. Everybody, thank you for staying with us for this long ass episode, but it was a lot of fun. And you guys, thank you for joining us. Adam, Chris. Course, man. Uh, you know, definitely you guys are gonna have to come back on adam you're gonna have to make like your 15th appearance chris you will have to do this again with us as well absolutely uh, man appreciate it a lot of fun so thank you guys thank everybody for listening and we will see you soon have a great night Peace. thanks guys take it easy